All right, what is going on, everyone? Happy Sunday, October 9th. Damn, sorry, the ninth of the month of the spooky season. What's going on to everyone out there? Uh, so, so excited. As you all may or may not know, this is my favorite day of the week, not only because we talk Atlanta, which I got a very special guest I'm going to bring in here in a little bit, but also later on we talk House of the Dragons again, guys. Sunday, fun day, all day. Love it here. But uh, listen, if this is your first time tuning in, I'm going to welcome you to the channel. This is our Sunday Atlanta discussions, live discussions. And today we got a fun one. We got a, 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 a very interesting episode with a, uh, a lot to say about the black entertainment, parenting, um, a particular Hollywood figure by the name of Tyler Perry. Hello. Uh, and, and so many more things that we're going to break down today. And I'm so excited to do so with you all. But hey, before we get into bringing in my guests and, and get into today's topics and conversation, do your boy a favor. You hit, you see that button, that, that thumbs up? Go ahead and hit that. It would mean a lot to me. And I appreciate the support. And also, it's a little share button. If you know someone that loves Atlanta, like, we do uh hit that share button on all your social media accounts your you know instagrams your twitters what have you go ahead and share it and let's get the conversation going and more importantly speaking of conversation it's a live chat so go ahead and put your thoughts predictions as far as what you hope to see next week uh deeper meetings funny moments all the stuff you all took away from this fantastic episode let us know in the live chat and those watching replay shout out to the replay gang if you guys can do the same be greatly appreciated with all that being said I got an individual in the back room, y'all, uh, that I've been a fan of since uh, earlier this year, uh, covering this very show that we'll be talking about. And he covers a lot of other various things that he'll let you all know here in a bit. But I am just very excited to have him on, get his thoughts in this episode, get to know him a little bit more because it's the first time us interacting and hopefully it'll be more of these in the future. But uh, enough of me babbling about this individual. Let me bring him on to the stream. And I'm talking about my man, Nine. What's going on, man? How are we doing today? Hey, what's up, everybody? <laughs> I'm doing love, great, man. man. As I said before, it's a pleasure to be on. Uh, I feel like you're on a legendary status right now. Oh, so come on, bro. <laughs> I, I, I'm so happy to be on and to uh, yeah, let's let's get let's get it, man. Let's get it. Hey, man. <laughs> Again, guys, I've been uh, such a big fan of his content, covering this show and doing a phenomenal job at doing so. Not only does he point out all the poignant things that the show brings to offer, but also the man has a great sense of humor. So he pulls out those funny moments and has some great clips in his breakdowns. One of the best online that I've seen. So very excited to get his thoughts in this episode. And, and get into it today. But before we get into discussion, nah, man, why don't you do us a favor just in case someone just created a Google account and, they, and, and they're not familiar with the fire content you put out there, man. Why don't you go ahead and just kind of give them a little bit more insight of what you do and where they can find you, my man? Yeah, uh, you know, I'm just Nine Nerd Yards on YouTube and why content is more a form of like video essays. Um, you know, I put a script together, do a voiceover, and like you said, I just kind of like to um, break it down, you know, scene by scene, uh, trying to catch all the little references. Um, and over time, uh, you know, with uh, more and more subscribers and people reaching out to me, we have kind of gained this uh, little bit of community where all the fire content is actually in the comments. So it's been all of you. Uh, I, I've pretty sure we have a bit of overlap when it comes to the your Atlanta videos. I know you cover a large uh, range of things, but um, you know, uh, the fire content is uh, always in the comments, uh, just this community of people um, wanting to theorize and talk about Atlanta. And, uh, you know, I've branched out into some other things, but I would say Atlanta is definitely my legacy content um, that people have been uh, uh, asking me for. So Definitely, man. And and again, not only does he he mention there, not just Atlanta, but I've seen, I know you you covered Marvel at one point, or you covered the Thor film, which I'm I'm sure you'll Ooh. probably get some insights on um, you know, Black Panther that's coming out in a couple months. And, oh, cannot um, wait. Cannot bro, wait that's that's that. a whole man. I'm I'm nervous. I'm not gonna lie, not I'm nervous about it because I I'm an advocate of uh you know recasting the character, not disrespecting obviously the legacy of Chadwick, but also I think the character just has so much more legacy and story to tell. But that's you know, that's another conversation for mm -hmm. another time and maybe we can talk about that <laughs> yeah <laughs> again guys the content that he offers is not only insightful but it's fun it's entertaining and it's just like i said it's fire man so you can find my man's nines information in the description of this video so i'm sure like he said I'm sure we have a lot of people that you know we uh we, we go to the barbecues and we we hang out so we got a lot of people that we uh, uh coexist with but if this is your first time watching him definitely do yourself a favor and hit that subscribe button you won't be disappointed but nine nah, man like you, you mentioned we we both love atlanta man and and when I bring in first time guests to talking about the show, 
I don't like to hear the story. I like to hear the journey, man. How did you come about finding this show? Was it a day one, A1 that you kind of stumble upon it after the first couple episodes of the first season? Uh, let me know a little bit about your journey of this uh, fantastic show. So, yeah, I've always been a Donald Glover or Childish Gambino fan. Yep. So I was a bit like, I, I you know, I can get a little bit snobby when I'm talking to the show with uh, with my friends because I'm like, oh, yeah, I was I was watching it on the premiere episode, you know, and like I'm not. No, you know, like, yeah, not, no, uh, bandwagon the bandwagon. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it was just one of those. It, it's just a mystifying show. Yeah. And then again, to have a show just kind of like representing all of these characters earn, I would say, like at cer certain points in my life, especially in that season one, I really, yeah. um, I really related to it. Just kind of like uh, that, uh, you know, uh, college dropout type of, you know, just trying to make himself known and prove himself. Right, it's, right. Um, it's one of those shows that, like, you know, I, I haven't seen um, myself represented in that aspect at all, like, in other forms of media. So it's something that's really special to me. It's really special. Yeah. I agree, man. I was similar to your path. I was a childish Gambino fan first before I even knew he was an actor. Like I came across mm -hmm. uh, a couple of his uh, geeks. It was a freaks and geeks song that he dropped on his mixtape. And then I kind of followed him from there. And, mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh, he, he's an actor. He's a comedian. And, you know, mm -hmm. lo and behold, he, was, I, I was on the first uh, first day one as far as I landed to him. Like, yo, this man is an absolute genius. And of course, you know, years later, he's doing mm -hmm. stuff in Star Wars and Lion King and obviously the show, mm -hmm. creating the show. So he's, he's an incredible creator. And I think the man has has uh, uh, a legacy ahead of him that hopefully can uh, um, something we'll be talking about for years and years and years. And I think this show is definitely Absolutely. something I'll always remember from him. But, um, you know, fast forward, man, we, we're in the fifth episode of this, what I consider to be a, a bittersweet season so far, man, because every episode has gotten better. Not that the episodes have been bad, but it seems like they just keep finding this rhythm and this tone and i mentioned it the first few episodes feels so season one season two um and i know you were kind of in my camp where i thought season three was very creative i know some people were a little bit thrown off by the tone and not being atlanta but i really appreciated the mm -hmm. art, art that came in season three but i would say so far man this fourth season has definitely been like an homage to the past nostalgia feels before we get into this fifth episode, man, how have you been feeling about the previous four episodes? And do you feel like it's been kind of a, a throwback to the old days? I feel like it's been perfect. Yeah. Almost. Basically perfect. Uh, the answers that we have come to terms with, um, I mean, these are things that we were wondering from episode one, day one, season one. Yeah. And getting that broaden out uh, Atlanta world with um Ern's family is amazing um you know what happened to Ern at Princeton that yep. was devastating and then mm -hmm. coming to light with all of those other terms with uh, uh him you know uh being abused was just yep. like heartbreaking and when a show is able to you know get me laughing and then get me like choked up and then get me <laughs> laughing again it, you know it, it's just been yeah, sensational I couldn't agree more. And 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 so you, you hit the nail on the head, man. Finding out things of the Princeton situation. Um that that kind of stemmed this whole trajectory of earn proving people wrong and having to you know that spiteful pettiness and, and where that kind of stems from and going back to where you uh mentioned his family man last week's episode seeing gloria and, and you know his dad and of course you know uh my man cat williams alligator man making a return so it's it's been great and and one of the things too that's been fantastic and uh is is these secondary characters right obviously i personally feel like al is like if we were talking about leads of the show of course donald glover's the, the pool but i think al is like the main character if we're being honest mm -hmm. and he was absent in this episode which i was okay with because darius and van are so interesting to me man like especially darius which i hopefully will get you know maybe a, a solo outing of him in the future before this season wraps up but this episode focused on van man and, and just kind of transition into your uh, initial thoughts of the fifth episode before we really kind of <clears throat> dive into the nitty-gritty we last time we saw her man things got out of hand if you know what i mean yeah. uh, with Van. Yeah. uh and we see her now trying to reacclimate herself back into atlanta and we know that she kind of felt bad for leaving lottie high and dry in season three and now she's having that moment to kind of be that parent and talk about how much she wants to always be there for her. your thoughts on this fifth episode man and, and were you excited that we got to spend a little more time with van yeah i, I mean I, I, the last of 
four ep- or three episodes, I was like, where, where is Van? Where is she at? I, right. Yeah, where <clears throat> is she at? And I feel like she came back in full uh, force. But the real star of that, char- of her character development, is seeing that um, mother-daughter relationship. Yeah. That bond. I mean, the, the actress that played uh, Lottie this episode, right. she's got a she's got a huge future in front of her because she was really playing the uh as, just like as a child actor and then actually acting as a child. Like I, right. I don't know, they really a lot of did some a lot of things to it. Yeah. Um but again, I feel like this uh van episode also kind of eases um some tensions that have been built up from all other van episodes um of course when we talk about her breakdown in season three Mm -hmm. but also you know um her from season one her like value episode when she's like discussing you know what she wants to be uh who she wants to be and uh her kind of like resignations of being um, just like seeing being seen as a mother and trying to like fight through that to like you know take on other goals I think it's right I think it, I think it has some pretty good messaging to it I, w- I couldn't agree with you more man and it, it is such an identity thing with Van since day one like you mentioned from the value episode and having people in her you know close friends uh, kind of putting things in her head and her in her ear and kind of she should be like looking at the friend that was you know going around hanging out with celebrities and kind of looking like man what if my what if Lottie Donald Glover's you know Erin wasn't in mm-hmm. life could I would I went down this path or when she's exactly. champagne poppy looking for that validation to try to get some likes to try to get out of her feelings about breaking up with Erin and mm-hmm. of course like you mentioned with season three just kind of who am I you know let me just create yeah. this fake persona and just kind of maybe right. live that life that I could have lived get that bread. Them on there. Right, exactly. <laughs> <Getting> that bread. <laughs> literally and figuratively uh getting that bread and and then in this episode she's still kind of on a, a discovery she's trying mm-hmm. to be you know maybe this is an opportunity for me to be a, a star and and seeing what this hollywood landscape looks like so I, i've always been a fan of, of zazzy beach number one mm-hmm. as an actress and I, i'll be honest with you uh nine there has been some moments where i feel like the show forgets about her <laughs> like she's yeah. kind of in the background not really mentioned not doing mm-hmm. that much but whenever she is given the time to shine i think she just takes the ball and run with it man i thought she did a great job in this episode as well as like you mentioned that mother-daughter relationship was like the foundation of this episode mm-hmm. which i love yeah just something i think we haven't like really seen i mean we've seen her like stress about being a mother but yeah. i think we haven't like seen those strong episodes of her like actually being your mother mm-hmm. and then i was like oh she's awesome she's she's an amazing mother she's doing yep. her thing couldn't agree with you more, man. And by the way, before we kind of get into it, shout out to the to the chat, man. I'm I'm up here pulling up the comments and not even shouting them out. Uh, you know, we got Tyreen in the building, we got uh Becky in the building, my homie uh film, Nicole showing some love again, guys. We appreciate you. I know Sunday is a day for football and sports and day to chill and relax. And the fact that you all took the time to chill with me and nine means a lot to me. Uh, and, and I really appreciate it. So again, just a friendly reminder to like, share, comment, and more importantly, my man nine has link is in the description y'all if you haven't already hit that subscribe check out his content uh again it's it's, it's always great content from him so again i appreciate y'all and speaking of appreciation my man q coming through uh what's up guys love this episode q from uh my man from detroit uh been a, a friend of on the internet for a very long time always showing love and support and shout out to you, Q, for making that intro for me, which I will be sharing once I do my next review. But shout out to Q with the Tenali Super Chat saying what's up to us. Love this episode. Well, we love the two, Q, and we're going to definitely you. dive into it. Uh, but another great content creator is Q Review. Check him out as well, guys. But shout out to you, Q. But transitioning over to this, just kind of breaking down this episode, man. We we open it with uh, Van and Lottie driving up to Chocolate Studios. And the first thing right off the bat, when we see that billboard night with the whole uh, lady talking about, hey, I can be the next, uh, what was her name? Uh, Sh- Sharina mm-hmm. Reed or something like that. I'm trying to find the uh, yeah. frame here. Like, I could be the next mom, the, the next car. Hire mom. me, Miss like, Chocolate. Hire me, Miss Chocolate. Reed. Bro, yeah. I'm like, and- we, we about to get into some fun stuff here. See, I did not know that that's also a real life reference. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah I didn't yeah. catch that. It's so it's so short and so quick, but apparently there has been already an actress that, I mean, it's a Tyler Perry episode. Yeah, yeah. And 
Uh, apparently, there already has been an actress that has put her name on a billboard. Like, you need to pay attention to me, Tyler. I could be your next leading woman. And I'm like, wow, the show is just going all out with the references. Listen, man, I, I briefly lived in Atlanta, not long enough to say I'm an Atlantian or whatnot. I was there for like mm-hmm. six months or whatnot. But uh, I mean, you can it, there's and, and I was there before he built his studio. But obviously, mm-hmm. when you're down there, that's Tyler Perry's is he's he's the black god down there. man. Mm-hmm. And, and, and we'll talk about that, too, when we get into Tyler Perry a little bit later, as far as the the side of like exploiting uh, black culture in a, in a light where it's just kind of showing only one side of, uh, you know, trauma and, and, and all the different stuff that and, and comedy and kind of poking fun of stuff that we find ourselves in in certain situations, but also opportunities. The man does give, uh, he is a philanthropist, as uh, Mr. Trackwood says, uh, but it's, mm-hmm. it's the give and take with Tyler Perry that we'll definitely get into a little bit here. But when yeah. we pull up nine to the, uh, to the lot, and we get the 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 uh, variety of different posters. That's when I saw those posters, man. I immediately know, oh, we're about to dive into something a little bit more into the Tyler Perry realm. And especially when we look at these titles of these movies here, man. Uh, from well, let me zoom in a little bit. We have nobody can tell me what to do. To uh, I, gotta, I gotta see that first one first. See what we're looking at before the sequel. Uh, Broken Home. You know, nah. You know, we remember that film. That oh, one. Yes. That one like the didn't that win Best Picture back in uh, 2019, right? Broken home. <laughs> yeah, I think that was the, the Oscar worthy uh film that I'm not mistaken. And of course, you know, classic <laughs> one small family and then unmoved was something that definitely moved me. Uh, not, uh <laughs> when we saw when I see those poses, bro, I'm like, bro, we about to get into some shenanigans and I'm already loving it. The work, the work that they had to go through on this, man. Like what how they had to hire people to actually make these to make- poses. <laughs> like <laughs> like <laughs> It is so out of control. It is so out of control for sure, man. And and from going from into the to the security guard, which I think was, and I didn't even catch it to watching it earlier today when he brought up the whole gun. Uh, you know, sometimes people sneak guns in. That's actually kind of a, which I think was a callback to to the grandmother a little bit later when she had the gun. She clearly must have mm-hmm. snuck that in there for them through. to not yeah. realize. Uh, but from there, we go into the lot. We have the young lady introducing herself and introducing everyone to the, uh, you know, um, Chocolate Studios, Chocolate Land for the culture, by mm-hmm. the culture. As Van makes her way into the lobby, and my man's yelling on the phone, this, that, and the third. Put him in a trunk. And listen, beauty is the subject of the beholder. But I think uh, it's fair to say that this young lady would definitely catch your eye if you saw, you know, Zazzy Beats kind of sitting I'm chilling. Trying not to <laughs> simp too hard. <laughs> But, very, wow. very beautiful, very beautiful man. And, and my homie yeah. uh, Taze Take was on the channel the other day. He actually got a chance to meet her and had. And you guys can check out that amazing story that he shared on our mm-hmm. She Hulk breakdown. But uh, he did. He he quietly kind of shot his shot. Uh, it's it's a great story. You guys should check it out. My man Taze Take uh, shared a very yeah, interesting story from running to Zazzy Beats at a, uh, at a gym. Yeah, I I don't know how you could, man. But <laughs> my man is, what's your name? Uh, Denise. And, you know, obviously her spot was blown up when the young lady calls her by her real name. I thought that was mm-hmm. funny. But f- from going into there to seeing more of those posters going down the hallway. And one of the things that Van mentions is, you know, she she hasn't seen a lot of these projects. She hasn't seen mm-hmm. a lot of these films. Uh, when walking down that hallway, Don, and, and just from transitioning to those opening beats, where was your mind at? What was you thinking? Was you, was you uh, excited to get into this chocolate factory? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think what caught my eye or caught my ear was the reference to Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, like, right away. Mm-hmm. Um, he was on that level of, like, oh, yeah, this is where Willy Wonka is. Uh, you, he, you, no one ever comes out. No one ever goes in. Right. 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 And that was like a throwback to like that, you know, old, old, uh, Gene Wilder, um, joint, you know, mm-hmm. when he was Willy Wonka or whatever. So I was like, what, what are they playing here? Like who, who are they going to really take a shot at? And they went full fledged. We're going to be taking shots at Tyler Perry. And I really want to know if Tyler Perry watches the show, if he's been made aware, if like yeah. he had to go, you know, if he's up there in this tower and like someone had to, you know, deliver him like a CD with the episode, like you have to watch this, Mr. Perry. There's been <laughs> there's been treason sent against your name, but uh, <laughs> you know, uh, where do you think? Well, 
where, where do you think it lies within the context of um like how do you think that the writers of the show are kind of trying to speak more commentary on just how to parry or is there something being said about just the whole industry and together you know, I think it's a little bit of column A and column B. And, and to your point, as far as like uh, Tyler Perry being aware, I think he was he probably knew about this as they were shooting this because he does run mm -hmm. Atlanta. So and I'm pretty sure that, the, you know, there were some people, some PAs, some people that probably worked on Tyler Perry Studios that was mm -hmm. working on this episode that might have exactly. told him, hey, right. just prepare yourself. And, and also, too, a lot of people let me know that. And I, I haven't watched a ton of Boondocks, but I've seen my fair share of different various episodes. Oh yeah, but there yeah. is a Tyler Perry, well, not Tyler Perry, but more a Medea uh, episode that kind of takes digs at Tyler Perry, and I heard that mm -hmm. he wasn't uh, supposedly he wasn't happy about it, uh, which you know, rightfully so. But it's all funny games. Uh, mm -hmm. But to answer your question, I think that this, and and we'll definitely dive into a little bit later as far as just personal opinion on Tyler Perry. But yeah, I think it does have something to say about. There is a give and take about how he, again, the opportunities he gives, you know, people, uh, black people in, in Atlanta and just various places of the world of being able to be in the Hollywood system, cut their teeth to maybe propel them to be directors, uh, actors, so on and so forth. But again, the art that they're making, at what expense do you kind of, not, not to get to the extent of like selling your soul, but it's just like, well, what are you, what are you actually making? Like the, mm -hmm. the, the art you're making, what is it putting out there for, for people yeah. to see that I think this episode definitely shines a light on, on top of the commentary of Hollywood kind of consuming, you know, the youth and, you know, a lot of people brought up in my comments, the colorism, the, the scene that was brought up earlier with the Lottie, Lottie being more uh, sought out than the other girl who was more dark skinned. So stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I think it definitely is not just solely hammering Tyler Perry, uh, but also has a little bit more commentary on just kind of the social commentary on, on Hollywood and the system exactly. and, and yeah. black entertainment being, you know, um, we mm -hmm. it seems like every black movie we get nowadays, as far as blockbuster goes, it's slavery, hood films, drama filled yeah. films versus mm -hmm. different sci fi, horror, and so on and so forth. So I think it's a, it's a multi layered uh, episode with this one. What came to mind, or like <laughs> right after watching this episode, I um, noticed this uh, Will Smith poster. Uh, mm. He's in a new movie called Emancipation. Emancipation. Yep. And I was like, Oh, buddy, <laughs> I don't know. Which I was so surprised. Cause I remember uh, if you probably know, there's still a lot of people know because I'm, I'm a big Will Smith fan. I've been following Smith mm -hmm. for a while, but he was, you know, originally supposed to be Django. Uh, but apparently he didn't like, oh, okay. I guess, the way the story was presented. And, you know, um, and, and I don't know if he had any thoughts about being a slave, but, you know, fast forward yeah. to however many years, I think it was what Django came out in 2012, something like that. But yeah. now here he is playing, <laughs> playing a slave. But yeah, very yeah, interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> But before we move on, man, I got another homie in the chat joining us who uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of hers. I'm so excited to get her thoughts on this episode. She has her review on this episode on the channel, so definitely check it out. But uh, coming back, and I'm so happy to see you, the homie, Tyra from Struggle Reviews. What's Hello. going on, Tyra? Hi, Elliot. Hey. How are we doing? Hi, nah, nice. This is Tyra. Not Tyra. Nice, nice. nice to meet you. Nice to meet, nice to you, meet too. you. Hello. I've been watching your stuff. You say watching my stuff? Yeah, I've been watching this stuff. Yeah. How many times did I tell you this? <laughs> Everybody knows I'm who you are. I'm surprised every time, Elliot. I never know anybody. Like, I've been checking you out. Like, you've been watching my stuff? Like, me? Of course, you know. Of course. <laughs> How you doing on this Sunday, Tyra? I'm fine. I'm excited to get into this episode. Like, this was a very good layered episode. <laughs> layered is definitely the word that I would use to describe this for sure, Tyra. And before we kind of get into your thoughts on this episode and, and jump into the conversation, if this is the first time people are seeing your uh, wonderful, beautiful face and hearing your awesome commentary, why don't you let them know who you are, where they can find your content? All right. I am, of course, Tyra with Struggle Reviews TV. I do movie commentary. I specialize in throwback movies, which I have a paywall for, or sometimes I just throw things out there. Uh, I also do current movies, you know, just whatever I'm in the mood for. I love horror movies. I do some TV shows. Like, I, it's a very diverse channel. Of course, you can follow me on Instagram to be, you know, pivy to the latest things that I have coming out. But it's always a fun time on my channel. You guys come over and subscribe. 
Definitely do so. And Tyra, I know you're a big horror fan like I am. I haven't seen your review for Hellraiser, but I can tell by the the uh, the description there, it, it didn't really float your boat. It was more uh, pain than it was pleasure, if I can tell by yes. the uh, thumbnail. But I'm definitely excited to see your thoughts on that. Um, and, and also your thoughts on today's episode, Tyra. Me and now we're just kind of talking about the opening and a little bit of Tyler Perry and industry, but just kind of jump into the conversation. How did you feel about this episode? Uh, just general take, and then we'll get your thoughts on uh, where we are in the episode so far. I was not expecting, like, it's, I don't know why we even look at trailers at this point and try to anticipate anything because <laughs> it's always something else. But I got the, um, of course, I think everybody instantly was uh, drawn to that Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry reference and, you know, the yeah. studios, Atlanta, the whole thing. But as soon as it started, you know, me and my nostalgic channel and me loving old movies, I got, you know, especially when uh, we have Van and Lottie first into the studios and, you know, it's Mr. Chocolate. It was very much, you know, Char Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. But mm. I led, you know, more to, let me see, towards the Wizard of Oz or the Wiz. Mm -hmm. That's what mm -hmm. I got watching it. And I love every single aspect of that in the way that they mix, you know, things that I love about the Wiz or, you know, what the that Wiz figure represented. With Tyler Perry, I thought, oh, you know, just because it wasn't just Tyler Perry. That's, you know, what we're pivoting to. But it, it was a lot of everything. But the way that they mix that seamlessly here in the show, I thought it was so, so awesome. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. And just pivoting off of that, Tyra, just kind of jump into where we are in the episode. Um there's there's a moment that and I kind of I forgot to mention it tonight a little bit earlier. And I'm gonna bring it up now as far as a little brief moment that kind of ties into this episode. When when Van's signing in and, and her and Lottie are getting situated, there's a quick shot mm -hmm. of a mom who is uh filming her daughter daughter doing like a little TikTok thing. Uh mm -hmm. and we don't have the full contest. Like, I don't know if the daughter, like if the daughter wants to do it or if it's one of those situations when the mom's trying to go viral. But mm -hmm. just kind of a curious conversation starting with you, Tyra. The whole idea of Social media and the pressure of kids being, uh, you know, viral sensations and, and parents putting mm -hmm. their kids out there to be maybe exposed to certain things at a young age. Mm -hmm. And just kind of curious on your thoughts on that. Um, and of course, we'll pivot over to you next night and get your thoughts. But Tyra, your thoughts on that short little scene and how do you feel about just the greater conversation about kids and, and kind of putting them in positions of uh, social media at, at mm -hmm. such a young age? I mean, social media is. Uh... It's give and take with social media. I like the aspects of people no longer having to audition as much and go and, you know, beg to, you know, studio execs to get an opportunity. People can create their own opportunities. But right. there comes a point, you know, with certain things people are doing to just go viral and get a moment. And mm -hmm. it's, it's putting a lot of pressure because people see, you know, oh, if this person can do it, then, you know, my baby can definitely do it. So it's it's it's, it's give and take with social media. But uh, I love what this episode had to say about it. I, uh, oh, this is the uh, the dark skin baby from the show. I didn't I didn't even recognize that these, these were the same two people. <laughs> I believe so. I believe <laughs> but it yeah, is. When yeah. she was saying, uh, you know, we should stick together. You know, my daughter yeah. wasn't chosen. You know, she's darker <laughs> than Lottie. But yeah, that's. Um, you can see just how dedicated her mom is to get her baby that chance. She's like, well, maybe my baby, she's already prepping her to be the understudy. Like maybe she could be the best friend character because right. I know with her being darker skin, she could never be the lead. Like that's Unlimited. absolutely crazy. Yeah. But mm -hmm. if that's, you know, the first thing that comes to mind, you know, her skin and her complexion is going to be a problem. Why would you even want her here in the first place? So it's just, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's terrible, but it's this this is what we're dealing with like this episode definitely made me think of just child stars we had you know uh jeanette McCart mccarty from mm -hmm. uh, nickelodeon the whole yeah. you know dan schneider all that whole situation or just you know you can go far back you know gary coleman and the whole dip and strokes cast like it's mm -hmm. we, you know all the horror the horror stories and everything so it made me think about that and what it really means to put your children in the industry and you know if you had an option would you really want to so great. Yeah. I mean, tossing mm -hmm. to you now, just kind of your thoughts on that uh, whole conversation from child stars to colorism that was kind of highlighted in this moment here to whatever you maybe even took away from it, man. What'd you think about this kind of small scene, but has I, context? I think, yeah, that child star <laughs> scene for real and um, colorism may be a running theme within the show. Uh, of course, we have the YWA episode yep. uh, where, you know, Al needs to seek someone out that has uh better optics as my man mm. said yeah. um and when yeah like yodel kid uh like that's i mean that's a real life situation where this kid was just 
yodeling at Walmart. Maybe he loves to do it or whatever, but someone definitely got their check from doing that, like in the real right. world or whatever. Right. And it, it, it can be that beautiful thing where it's, uh, you know, all uh, gives these kids an opportunity to, you know, be stars if they want it to, but then it always opens up the world of exploitation too. So, yep. you know, it's a dangerous game. Mm-hmm. I agree. And listen, uh, Nine and Tyra, I can't uh, have you mention Yodo without, you know, RIP, man. Oh, so we gotta... RIP to Yodo, kid. Ricky. Man. RIP. Ricky oh, Rocket, man. He died too young, y'all. Too, too young, too young. But uh, <laughs> as we move on, this is kind of when the conversation gets brought up as far as. Um, we were at we're in the uh, hair and makeup uh, place. A young lady's setting up her hair and all that, and she mentions to Van, "Are you a fan of Black, uh, not Black, but uh, Chocolate Studios?" But ah, you know, I really haven't watched it. This is more of an opportunity. I, I want to support the Black art um, and, and give myself an opportunity. This could be something that can, you know, maybe open up a new door to me. Uh, which brings me to this question, Tyra, in regards to again the the art subjecting yourself to, even though you know maybe the art can be controversial or looked at in a certain light but still kind of taking that opportunity just kind of curious on your thoughts on that particular conversation and is it right to to do it is it wrong just kind of your thoughts on uh you know this opportunity and and taking advantage of it but it it might be taking advantage of your integrity Hmm. i mean we are not in the entertainment industry at all i don't think anybody's in the position to say you know what's right and what's wrong because you know Mm -hmm. a lot of people they would love to be afforded to do more but it's just like you know what in the meantime am i just you know not going to take work it's like i know that these roles like i love how van was making excuses as soon as she arrived it was like well you know i'm here just for this but Mm -hmm. you don't actually you know support or really like any of the content that this you know production company is putting out but at the end of the day it's work and you know how are we going to tell people not to give work a lot of you know stars who went on oh you know all the way back from the the very beginning of just black stars like uh you know uh like portraying, you know, the mammy roles or, you know, give yeah. a little soft shoe and Mr. Mm-hmm. Charlie and whatnot. And it's just mm-hmm. like they had such backlash, but they were, you know, being highly paid. They were, you know, they were afforded so many opportunities. And at the end of the day, those type of situations did open doors. Open but it's doors. like, look what we're yeah. left with. When you go back and watch those things, it's like, oh my God, like you really subjected yourself to do these things. But yeah. at the end of the day, it was work. And if I don't have any work, then I don't eat. So yeah. mm-hmm. it's just, it's, it's once again, those double-edged swords situations and it's terrible that you would have to do those things but it's work Elliot I don't know it's it's work and that's where kind of nine that's where that's where Tyler Perry kind of comes to the mix and there's various others different Hollywood producers and people that give black people and then people of color opportunities but again the question at hand nine is just kind of okay like Tyra said, it does open the doors and someone has to be that quote unquote guinea pig to allow those other roles to be given. But mm-hmm. at that it's that whole other side of the conversation. Well if you subject yourself to just being the loud black friend, the you know the baby daddies, the drug dealers of the mm-hmm. world, then you're creating only one box for us to kind of be in, and it's so hard to break out of that box. You know, we are seeing a change in the Hollywood landscape. You know, our Black Panthers and, and the Get Outs mm-hmm. of the World and the mainstream, but we're still kind of segregated to, as you just mentioned earlier, Will Smith, one of the biggest mm-hmm. stars in Hollywood, being in a, in a slave movie. Is it a right thing? Is it a wrong thing? Your thoughts on that, man? Yeah, I think um, when we are pandering, I think that's kind of like the what I find fault into Tyler Perry because he's at that level, yeah. right? So he's yeah. making the decisions now. So why are you still kind of like pandering to this issue? But at, at the same time, it's selling, you know? Mm-hmm. So right. where are we... <clears throat> like it, it's holding up a mirror in a sense, but at the same time, no, it's not. Cause I don't really think that like any of us on this panel are really like, you know, going to the next Medea movie. Or <laughs> no. <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm good. I'm no, good. I was, I was thinking the same thing because I was like, everybody, I think we are really hard on the actors and nobody goes to the overhead to look at yeah. the people who are writing the scripts and putting out this content, producing right. and directing these movies. Mm-hmm. And then we do have somebody like uh, Tyler Perry who is able and afforded to make his own decisions. And, but, you know, yet and still, he decides to mm-hmm. put out the exact same thing every single time. 
Yeah, <laughs> which I mean, so, so just kind of dive into that, that subject matter. Mm -hmm. Um, as far as uh, and whew, that was a big payday for Will there, man. Thirty-five million. What? Okay. Guess, uh, <laughs> maybe laughing to the bank, right? I guess. That's, uh, so, so to that point, shout out to Kevin for that uh, that comment there. It's the whole conversation about, and I mentioned in my video. When it comes to those type of films, slave films or, you know, highlighting certain events that people weren't aware of. Like I mentioned in my video, the whole like um, Lovecraft Country and Watchmen brought up the Tulsa, the Tulsa Master, Massacre. Yeah, mm -hmm. and a lot of people were very like, oh, wow, that show created. I, phew, can you imagine that happened in real life? Like oh, it, it, right. it, it, yeah. it is a real event. Um, so it's that side of the conversation where it's like, you know, you make these films, shows to educate people of things that they weren't aware of. Um, and then this the other side of it was like, that's not the only thing that we have had history that that's not the only thing that we're known for. So Tyra, just again, I know we kind of touched on a little bit, but just kind of dive a little bit deeper into, do you personally get tired, offended of uh, the next Will Smith film? Mm -hmm. um, you know, we had them that came out last year on, on Amazon. We have a variety mm -hmm. of different, you know, Kiki Palmer was in a slave sci-fi yeah. movie earlier this year. It's just like, do you get offended by that? Or do you see it as an opportunity where it's like, it's, it is somewhat, it's our story. We want to tell these stories where we can let people know what happened. Like, how do you feel about that? I would think that, you know, uh, like, oh, I'm not offended, but I think I am because now I don't even bother to watch them anymore. I just yeah. kind of, <laughs> you know, Roy, some like, things, here we you know, go again. We, we do have yeah. to, you know, watch certain stuff like, oh, I'm going to I'm going to review it. But I don't I don't care. I have any interest or desire okay. to watch them. Not only is it, you know, it, it doesn't even present any, you know ideas or it's, it's the same exact same, thing every yeah. single time and it's just yeah. like even if we were going to go the route of you know slavery i think about the pushback that we got for uh the nat turner situation like they never want to you know ve you know venture from the script it's always the same exact thing and i just i just don't care to see it anymore i would love to see us branch out and do more and, and present more and be more creative but it's like we only have five type of black movies yeah. to do and we keep doing those exact same five <laughs> yeah, I agree. Nah, same with you. Same question for you, man. And then we, we do it when we do get a show. Like, for example, I mentioned Lovecraft. It's canceled. We love that show. <laughs> Mm -hmm. like to pieces and like tyra said and unfortunately got canceled Misha mm -hmm. green i follow her on twitter she posts she's continuously the post mm -hmm. like thoughts for season two and fingers crossed tyra nine mm -hmm. that apple amazon hell tyler Perry, no, I, I, did, I did not want tyler <laughs> 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 but though, you know she also did uh yeah. i think underground underground, underground. Was also a, di a slave show but you know yep. we decided to do s uh, some different things there as well it was i thought it was mm -hmm. a different take I, I love that once again mm -hmm. it was canceled Exactly. <laughs> and that's the thing. It always, it, it, and ugh, again, Lovecraft, sci fi, horror, all the stuff I love. But now and again, yeah. just your thoughts on the commentary on okay, we make these things because number one, we want to tell our stories. We want to tell them. We don't want a white producer, a white director telling these stories. But at the same time, it's like we, we're so much more than just those stories. But it's mm -hmm. the conversation about okay, I'm going to make this film. I'm going to put all my heart and sweat and blood and tears. I think of, um, uh, I'm thinking I'm slipping on his name right now, but the the, the man that did 12 Years a Slave, uh, whose mm -hmm. name slipping me, but he did that, uh, and he could do he's that builds a portfolio of other projects. Spike Lee, you know, mm -hmm. do the right yeah. thing, builds a portfolio off of that. So, mm -hmm. your thoughts on that, man? As far as Hollywood stereotypes and how they handle us in, in uh, today's, uh, I think you know, there's one person we could look to, Steve, and that's Steve. Jordan Peele right now. Yes, yep. if we look at what Jordan Peele is doing that I think it's done right for what the resources are and what he's able to come up with. I think he's done right. And where Tyler Perry, I got to say, like, uh, Diary of a Mad Black Woman is a good film. It's well written. It's kind of, it's, you know, it definitely has its tropes, but yeah. only because now they've kind of like flanderized the whole he's kind of flanderized himself in the whole genre where yeah. he just kind of like leaned into more of like the tropes and the stereotypes but when we look back at like what i think he may have set out to do first it may have been more noble or more uh, um, representative of like actually telling these stories true to life instead of um uh, going for it uh mm -hmm. uh, uh just by by mass um because it, it's it's just too much it's just too much content of the same category where it's not something we can 
it's it's really even hard for me to say this because like you know i'm i'm from uh, zimbabwe right mm -hmm. and so i don't really see myself like as just like a monolith of one um you know characteristic uh, uh or or just like defined you know, sometimes I'm can define myself by those tropes, but not all the time. It's you mm -hmm. know, there's something has to give and move and structure, um, and so it's not pandering. I don't, I don't know. Right. I don't know. No, I 100% I agree with you there, man. And even these comments of like, and I and I I can't I have no two cents of these shows. I don't watch Power, the Power Universe, but I know that it, like there are what twelve like twelve <laughs> spinoff shows. They're still the main show, and, and yeah. people love it. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and rightfully so. I, I from, from what I understand, it it is definitely a show that entertains people. But again, it's like it's it's, it's like Same that thing. show. I know Snowfall is another Snowfall. show that I haven't watched, mm -hmm. but I heard it's fantastic. Yeah. Um, but again, there's there's the whole conversation again. It's just like okay, Same is that all crack, we have? Same, mm -hmm. crack, crack. <laughs> Same thing. Crack. <laughs> Same thing for sure. And then also shout out to I mean, this is a list of great people that I think of too. Uh and, and throw in uh Ava DuVernay too. Even yes. we, we forget about her mm -hmm. Disney film, mm -hmm. which I will always forget about. I I'll just pretend like she uh was this, <laughs> you know, creatively was it another spot? A wrinkle <laughs> so, in time. Wrinkle, oh my goodness, Tyra. <laughs> I saw it in theaters because I was, you know, we'll talk about supporting all things black. I saw it in theaters, Tyra, and I was so disappointed. I'm like, oh mm. my, this is mm. terrible. Mm. And then she comes out with when they see us and just, you yeah, know, completely like, changes oh, the game. Sense. Right. She's like, oh, okay. guys, I, I got some. Oh, okay. they oh my goodness. This. But okay. those are some great people that I definitely uh, am, and I think are creating and, and throw it like uh, Nina said, throw in, you know, uh, Jordan Peel and that, that, that bunch too. Mm -hmm. They're creating paths and creating these different stories uh, and different, you know, playing within different genres. So I definitely agree with that sentiment there. But mm -hmm. tying it back into the episode, y'all, starting with you now, we, we get a, a shot of a, a, a Mr. Chocolate Studios produced show. I don't even know if they gave us a, the name of the show, but we see uh, Draymond, I think his name was, which if you guys are basketball fans, uh, I don't know what Draymond Green right now is, is wilding mm -hmm. out. But uh, he, he's talking to his wife, calling his friends a thought, and, and hence why they have um, – Van dressed up in that uh, attire to kind of fit a certain demographic yeah. or fit a certain look uh, <laughs> was very interesting. But Lottie Nine, Lottie steps up, my man. She's like, "Oh, shut up!" Shut up. I thought man, that was so cute. Who said that? <laughs> just <laughs> and just throwing her into the mix for a minute, man. I kind of was like, "Van, no, like just say no." Uh, mm -hmm. Especially when knowing, uh, you know, this is your first time being on stage. Now your daughter's being segregated to it, but just your thoughts on again, just seeing that scene play out and and, and Lottie stepping up and uh, checking Mr. Draymond in this scene. Well, uh, at the same time, I just like actually liked the um, well because I could see we could see the conflict already, right? Because mm -hmm. one of the things that she told the hairdresser was that she also said that she just wanted to have her uh, daughter see her doing something cool. You right. know what I mean? Right, right, right. And that's like kind of like on that mother daughter bond. And yep. so there's a bit of a conflict of like, oh, maybe my daughter also will be interested in this and this is a new experience for her and whatever. It can't be like, you know, it won't be all the time or whatever, but you know, right. when in Rome, right? But how easily she got swooped up into that was yep. uh, very concerning too. Um, <laughs> very, I, I mean, from one one station next was shout out to uh, Tommy Lester and John Witherspoon, <laughs> two legends. Oh, yeah. Those, I love those moments there. Uh, but Tyra, tossing it to you again, just this moment playing out, the little um, micromanaging from Mr. Chocolate, from as you mentioned, the Wiz coming yes. from the, uh, <laughs> the yeah. intercom yeah. there, <laughs> Mikey. Oh, uh, put put your hands on the shoulder. Mess oh, up her hair. Mess up her hair. Oh, thank like, you. Oh, no. More, more, Mikey. More. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. We'll fix it in post. I, I'm, so at this point, I'm just dying. Go ahead, now. Can I ask you guys? Like, did you were you already hip to it? Like, I was like really on the edge of like who Mr. Chocolate was from like the very end. Like, oh, did yeah. you guys no. kind of like check some tones, or like, did you have oh, any? Yeah. 
uh, inclination at, at that at point. At this when point you're just in episode, his voice. it was the Tyler Perry isms, but then also mm -hmm. I think of the D'Angelo episode, thinking that it was going to be a fake out. Um, mm -hmm. And we've had yeah. various different moments where they're kind of alluding to certain characters, but playing up to a different, you know, Justin Bieber being black in this world and stuff like that. So I'm like, maybe exactly, it is yeah. like a completely different character, a little yeah. bit of Kanye West character or whatnot. But mm -hmm. lo and behold, it, it ended up being who it was. But at this point, <laughs> episode to answer your question, I was kind of yeah. like. Maybe there's still like, some room from interpretation. So what about you, Dad? I didn't know. I didn't. I had no idea who it was back there. I was trying to figure it out, but I was like, "What?" It, it was very mysterious. It was low key, a little spooky, mm -hmm. which yeah. I love because not only you know the Wizard of Oz, the Wiz, and uh, something like Charlie in the Chocolate Factory, it has that weird spooky undertone to it. Like it's scary mm -hmm. that you are able to dictate and control so much, and nobody can see you. Right. But that mm -hmm. that was crazy. <laughs> But I, of course, I, you know, everybody peed. It was so much colorism throughout this episode. Like they had to like, no, we have to create a thought experience. You can't go out right. there looking like Van and be a thought. Right. But I love this because it showed how things could have went left because Van, essentially, she was here for herself. And you always hear so many stage moms like, oh, you know, they didn't quite pop and they didn't make it. Right. And, you right. know, they preferred my child and they kind of, you know, inflict their dreams on their child. So this could have went, you know, Van, like, oh, like you're interested in it, but I'm here. You know, this is this is for me. Mm -hmm. And if it wasn't Van or if it was, you know, somebody else who had an agenda, they would have very much maybe like, oh, I'm going to, you know, push and dive into this. But right. I thought it was really funny how, of course, we have um, Lottie, which is I was like, wow, Lottie is speaking in this episode. She is so right. present. Yeah. We have never yeah. seen her. I was like, yeah. Lottie can talk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But when she uh told the man to shut up, of course he likes it and everybody's just oh it's just so hilarious and it's instantly, you know, all this praise and they're swept up. But I was like, nobody's taken into the fact that Lottie told this man to shut up, like he's a mean man. She wasn't mm. separating, you know, fictional, like, oh, this 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 is he's talking, you know, to my mom a certain way. I'm gonna tell him right. to shut up. You don't yeah. talk to my mom like that. So if she's not even old enough to separate, you know, what's real and what's not enough to tell somebody to shut up, why should she be subjected to a scene with a woman eating a crack sandwich like we we, we don't need to be <laughs> and you know these type of scenarios my you know she's not even old enough to separate the two but i love how it was just you know instant from the moment that he like saw like oh i can do all of these things with her like oh oh she's mine now okay take it to the yep. next scene it, everything was just going so fast and if it was anybody else you know but van who was you know trying to peep the bigger picture they probably would have rolled with it if it was yeah, if it was literally that mom that we saw in the scene, as we know, she was already yeah. hip to it and sipping the Kool Aid. And and again, as you mentioned, uh, and I mentioned it earlier, Austin L. Fisher, who plays Lottie in this episode, fantastic job. Like the little that's a that mm -hmm. has to be a lot of pressure on on a, on a young girl's shoulders to not only like nice earlier playing. Lottie, but also playing a character within the show. It's a, it's a lot of layers that this yeah. young lady brought to this role, and uh, hopefully, uh, and again, <laughs> just because she's a young lady I acting. I think in it just show. takes so, so much skill to yes. play, like, be an actor, and then to play an actor that's kind of new to it. Like, she had to be a bad actor almost. She had right. to like, <laughs> obviously, she's already a skilled actor, but then she had to like act as someone that's. A unskilled child, and new to this i'm exactly. like wow exactly. that is that's layers, that's bro. layers deep layers and we're looking at the the future ladies and gentlemen right in front mm -hmm. of us uh <laughs> and speaking of uh uh right in front of us we got uh, over 104 people watching us live and i appreciate you guys joining us again hey, thumbs up, up share <laughs> uh but more importantly uh these two wonderful people that you all see on the screen now from tyra to nine check them out y'all their links are in the description Hit that button, hit that subscribe, show them some love and support because uh, they, their content is, like I said, is some of the best on the platform. So definitely show them some love. So as we kind of pivot on to her now becoming this uh, child star just within a, a blink of an eye, which does kind of speak to a greater language about as far as the younger, the better. Get them young, get them in the industry young, as you know, uh, Tyra brought up earlier. And, and Tyra, uh, the young lady's name that played Dorothy, um, um. who's... Uh, Slip her name. Judy Garland. Julie Garland. Julie Garland. Yes. Garland yeah. Mm -hmm. Very perfect example of getting into the industry young and unfortunately what Hollywood uh swallow her up and spit her out and unfortunately <laughs> affected her career and her life tremendously. So again, that whole idea of, of again cutting the teeth young. Oh, this is fun. But is it fun when you're just mm -hmm. being thrown around from stage to stage, thrown into these situations, not understanding the context, not understanding what's actually going on. Uh just speaks to just the the landscape of, of how, how Hollywood treats young people uh mm -hmm. and, and manipulates them and takes advantage of them and whatnot. But 
as we move kind of further into the episode, we get uh, Grandmama here uh, coming into the mix. And first off, she threw a little shade, y'all. Uh, when she talked, when, when she asked, is Van is a, is a spiritual a or a Christian? Yes. She yeah. said, oh, you know, I'm spiritual. You know, we're not all perfect, baby. I, 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 was, like, uh, I was like, like on Jean. Yeah, on Jean. Exactly. I'm like, like, oh, my goodness. How dare you leave shade. this girl in sin? That's like, oh, she just exactly. called her a thought. <laughs> she really exactly. just called exactly. me Exactly. Exactly. And uh, yeah. I'm trying to understand, and, and now I want to just curious what you. I, I can't think of verbatim what she says, but she pretty much says that see. the youth goes into the pearly gates of the heaven with this, uh, this, this wonder and this lack of questioning. Just kind of goes into this opportunity uh, of of heaven. I don't know if it was an analogy of speaking to like the wonder of Hollywood, where when you're so naive and young, you don't really question what you're doing or you know where you're going. You're just kind of out of you know she she said you, um yeah. if you don't receive the uh kingdom of god as a child you won't enter mm. and she says that she always thought that it meant whoever's not open to the joys of a child their own child then right you know they're not open to the joys of life right mm -hmm. so that's when i was like okay how come they're they're really messing with van at this point they're really right. trying to conflict van on like what she feels is right for her daughter and mm -hmm. uh it, it just felt like manipulation all around yeah. right <laughs> i think i th so and i think you're so on the point there her and we'll talk about you know shamik earlier who we got in the episode uh kind of being these road bumps for van I, th I definitely think there was some some manipulation going on 100 percent tyra your mm -hmm. thoughts on that as everything that uh nine said and also just your interpretation of uh mm -hmm. grandmother with the gun yeah the same exact thing <laughs> well you know i was on the yellow brick road child so i was like all right here we go with all the obstacles the poppy fields you know the right. scarecrows to try to you know get you off your mission or you know give her this false sense of security are you doing the right thing of course we have you know the, the, the handsome guys or whatever like it was just mm -hmm. all just to kind of put blinders on her while we have mm -hmm. Lottie getting further and further lost because Lottie is just like oh this is fun like I get to play dress up and mm -hmm, what right. you know what's Knows not to like cat. about this <laughs> yes I loved it because we always have the uh the parents who maybe be you know a little bit more lenient like oh no I don't have to pressure my child they want to do this but just like you know what child wouldn't want to do it and you know who you know who are them to, to who are they to know any better so it's kind of up to you to make that decision or if I want to you know protect my child or subject them to such a ruling schedule like they had been there for like an hour all of a sudden Lottie right. was just you know going and it mm -hmm. was so easily for her to get swept up in that and you know constantly we have people reiterating why she should be so happy for this opportunity like this is great like who would want this she she's going to be brilliant like it's like no I didn't come here for this this is supposed to be a one and done situation and now I can't find my daughter <laughs> just curious non and Tyra and everything happened so quick did, was it did it dawn on you all that um that van maybe should have called Ern. I don't know, not to say for permission, but just to kind of, I don't know, be like, hey, you know, her daughter might be on TV. <laughs> yeah. Did y'all think of that for a brief second? Or again, it, it just happened mm -hmm. so quick, she didn't really have time to react. And she, I, she probably even had her phone on her because she was on set too. So I think because like how it was set up, it was just like, oh, we're going to just put Lottie, not even really in the scene. It's just kind of like, oh, I'm going to like a screen test basically just right. like straight up just Which like they that. were just blocking I, but you know, yeah they'll fix it fixing the post yeah. um now I, I you know i i don't i don't really think there was a situation at first that called for that that she needed to even let her it know just because it was yeah. just like you know she still had like her visitors tag on the um, right right on mm -hmm. the joint so i was like you know this didn't seem at first like anything like more than just like oh let's get this kid an experience where she's right. like on tv or whatever right you know not like a yeah like this is a father uh mother we got to sit down for three hours to debate this it was it kind of all just kind of happened in a, in yeah. a organic yeah. way yeah mm -hmm. definitely catch you off card um but when we go from here we again we we get Shamik, which I think was actually funny because it's probably a, a nod at Shamik Moore, who has worked mm -hmm. with Tyler Perry and had one of the worst wigs I've ever seen on someone in my entire life. Uh, <laughs> but listen, y'all, little, 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 
Shamar. 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 Oh, Shamar. Yeah, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm thinking, you know, I'm thinking of Shamik was the kid. Yeah. I was like, he was in a tight No, not back. him. Not him. No, he's a little dope. He's a dope back. Uh, but little Lottie, man, she's a star and she's a natural at this, uh, as we were seeing her in the scene. And you guys mentioned her earlier. The mom is the same mom that was in the uh, the mm -hmm. lobby earlier. And she's kind of, you know, partnering up. And as uh, Nine and both Tyra mentioned, that the whole colorism of her being dark skinned and light skinned and all that stuff. But at this point, y'all, um, Van's getting a little bit upset. She's like, she's very concerned. Uh, where's my daughter? As we get our first little Easter egg as far as Friday alumni and legends of um, Tommy Lester stage as they're heading there. As he's shooting a shot, Tyra, um, this light-skinned individual uh, who's from New Orleans shooting this shot with Van. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, what he mentions in this conversation, Tyra, is which goes back to the Tyler Perry thing opportunity I, I went to jail mm -hmm. for two years i didn't get yes. an opportunity to get other jobs but hey they you know they got this program I'm, I'm able to be a maintenance and do my other stuff on the side this is kind of a a launchy path for me to maybe get another opportunity such opportunity a, such a tyler perry such a tyler uh, trope yes. though such like a, yes. <laughs> it's just, yes. with, with him i was questioning like when it because we saw that he just kind of um I was questioning Mr. Chocolate and just how long did he maybe have, I mean, it seemed like a surprise when he was like, oh, who said shut up, put her in the scene. But from the way that he kind of approached Van from the very beginning, it was almost like instant distraction. You know, let's give her something, you know, pretty to look at. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, we're trying to, you know, get a hold to, uh, to Lottie and have her do whatever. And you're, you know, entranced by this handsome man or whatever. Yeah, but I, mm -hmm. I was like, how long did he, uh, plot on her was this just you know after the effect but it was something mm -hmm. he said about the fact that you know he gave me this big opportunity and i just feel you know kind of indebted so if i you know need to come distract you so we can move lottie from scene to scene girl what's up let's go to the boiler room like let's mm -hmm. <laughs> let's, you know, let's, let's go hang out <laughs> so I, I, he was just you know another yet another major distraction a major distraction at which you know oh, i can help you get to your daughter but you know once we got there yeah. A lot. <laughs> exactly. Now, your thoughts on that, man? Uh, I don't know. I, I think that's really bold because, like, she's there with her daughter, man. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> going to the boiler room, like, you're tripping. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, she would have went, though. Lottie could have been waiting. Lottie could have been at the Oscars for all we know. She well, been or been you mean the, the BET Awards? Happened, like, on the BET totally Awards. Sent to, know, you know, just pray up on her and do that <laughs> distraction so that they could do whatever they wanted with Lottie. <laughs> yeah, and it, it yeah. is funny that he they uh you know going back to what Nine said earlier, I don't think it's coincidence that he a coincidence that he happened to be light skinned, right? Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Very a uh, light skinned move to do to his little uh, card at the end there. But yeah. well, no, we had a yeah. dark skinned brother at first. You know, he was loud on the phone. Very though. true. He, oh, Very no, true. He was a little ratchet. And it's like, what was that name? about? And we got the uh, the little Cosby Show <laughs> reference. It was just like, what's your name? Like, oh, Denise. Denise. Like, yeah. no, Vanessa, we're ready for you in the back. Oh, <laughs> I didn't even put. I just thought, yeah, when you that that's okay. hilarious. That is. Very That's hilarious. really um, funny. No, no, to your point, I'm very curious on what that, you know, who he was on the phone when I, I said it would be funny if they tie that back. He's like trying to, keep I don't know, there. talk keep to Darius or something. Keep him in the trunk or something. <laughs> we know that they don't like My to do boy? too many okay. connective uh, tissues from one episode no. to the next, but I would really? love to see what was going on there. Had to be on some other stuff. Right, yeah, right, some yeah. kidnapping <laughs> type <laughs> situation <laughs> with a black, with a light skinned dude, and, you know, nice maintenance guy fixing things, and mm -hmm. oh yeah, a lot, a lot of stuff. Cryptocurrency and yeah. so much. They make me sick with everything they squeeze into these episodes. Like it's just so much, <laughs> <Yeah>. so much, <laughs> so much going on. Uh, um, which I mean, this is a little. I'm looking at my notes here. Um, a little scene, and I don't know, Tyra, and, and now how you guys feel about when she did mention uh, Doja Cat. Um, I have no kids. You know, I have a couple of nieces and nephews uh, or whatnot. But do you guys have a personal opinion on when kids should be exposed to certain, and, and nothing against Doja Cat, but I, I don't think, uh, you know, I would say Lottie's seven, eight years old or whatnot. I don't think a, a seven, eight-year-old should be subject to that type of music. But again, I'm not a parent. Hell, when I was, uh, you know, in middle school, I was just in a Eminem, 50 Cent, like, uh, you know, <laughs> just gobbling that stuff up thinking yeah. I'm the young Jeezy, you know. Um, but I don't know. Uh, Tyra, do you have a personal opinion on when kids, again, going back to be a subject to mm -hmm. TikTok or whatnot, but music, we, you know, we know the show heavily is involved with music. Is there a certain age that you think kids should be uh, presented to certain artists? or, oh, or... Man. It's, it's crazy because yeah. we listen to so much that, you know, going so back in hindsight, it's just like, well, 
but yeah but now i think the difference is even though we had all of those artists where it could be like oh you know this is Fox, foxy brown and this is lil kim we had so much variety Mm -hmm. To kind of go like, oh, not only are, you know, women or, you know, our artists presented this way, but they can also be this way. But yeah. we always now like see a tendency. Elliot. Yeah, there's a tendency now to only see one thing. So yeah. I always kind of kind of scale back on certain things, like maybe up until my daughter was, you know, maybe 10, 11 to where it's just like, OK, now I think you're comfortable enough to maybe go, you know, hey, just because. It's, you know, I'm being called a B word in this song. You know, yeah. I'm not that I, I can, you know, mm -hmm. separate the two to where, you know, enough. But once you're, you're not you're just ready, ready to process and digest that, I have to find myself kind of trying to scale back on what I'm listening to because they might hear it or repeat yeah. it or, you know, I love the fact that if I play something, one of my kids, like my smallest son, he go, oh, mommy, they're cursing. Like, you're not supposed mm -hmm. to be listening to that. We don't curse. You know, I, I love that. <laughs> no. so. Yeah. So, but yeah, yeah. There's, there's just not enough variety for somebody to go like, oh, all, you know, female ra rappers or women aren't this this one way. So right. I do try to scale back. But yeah, right now, the 12 year old is bumping all the Doja Cat in the world. Yeah. Oh, you thought I was feeling you? <laughs> oh, yeah, Lord. Was, listen, uh, nah, your thoughts on that, man, as far as this kind of, um, you know, I, I, and... I don't got no kids either. But yeah. like, yeah, I, I, I was always listening to, um, you know, the craziest Cra I mean, I was just, you know, listening, the I was just stuff, in the like, Eminem talking about killing his wife, and I'm just like listening. Uh, to yeah, oh, when yeah, you talk man. about like Kim and like yeah, Kim, yeah. Marshall Mathers, <laughs> and, like, oh all my that, goodness, like, man! I was listening yeah, to Marilyn yeah. Manson. It was dark and <laughs> hell was hot. It was all kind of. <laughs> <laughs> But, but yeah, and we turned out we had, great, guys. Know, the miseducation of Lauren Hill. We had, mm -hmm. you know, certain mm -hmm. it, was, it was some type of diversity. We had super yeah. duper fly. We had yep. certain mm -hmm. artists, or if you, you know, decided to venture back, it was a lot of artists like you know Will Smith that would be considered corny or whatever. Yeah, who it, you yeah. know you could rap without even saying one curse word. We don't have <laughs> we don't have any of that now. <laughs> right. Um, I mean, listen. I, I might, yeah, yeah. Music. That's a whole yeah, the whole nother. But Bane definitely <laughs> seems a bit like okay are like a little bit joking a little bit uh weirded out by that like <laughs> oh i look like doja cat comment and just like you know give me thumbs up thumbs down and I, was, I just thought that was like a really good moment she just seemed like really on top of like what she actually does want to do and like kind of yeah. given that uh um you know not control to lobby yeah. but like yeah. a bit like she's <clears throat> making um able to guide her through like this these decisions um, but that's also like the uh, second Doja Cat. Like last season, they had like a little Doja Cat reference too. Um, uh, um, the, um, yes, at, yes, at yes. Fernando's um, yeah. party. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. The, the person, the other camp is working with Doja Cat or something yep. like that. So yep. I don't know. Hey, cameo, maybe. cameo, maybe. Yeah, obviously, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? Did y'all see the trailer for next week? Because we do have a, another hip hop star. Yes. I, I yeah. <laughs> I I, I, you want me to tell you now, or you want to be surprised? He's in the trailer. Uh, let's go, go, tell me. Uh, Draco, Soldier Boy, is it yeah. next week? What? Yeah. Okay. It looks hilarious. <laughs> it looks hilarious. And I think uh, okay. Ty, what's name? I think the episode's called Crank That crank Killer. That. It's about you know, Crank. Oh, is, we take, a, we clearly taking it back to the early two thousand. Nine. I, I think next week's gonna be a like, classic. Yeah. There's Anybody who did a parody like, of Crank That, he yep. coming back. Everybody hide. It was Everybody. Very, <laughs> I saw in the like, season undertones. trailer. <laughs> yeah. The season trailer, I saw like, the crank, a little yep. thing. Crank That, Jimmy yep. Neutron. The, the age Bro. of the Crank That. Oof. That was a, oh my! That was a whole man. That was a confusing time. That was a confusing time. I don't but know next where, week. what I'm cranking next. Yeah, know? it's it's gonna be another <laughs> classic. I have a feeling about, but kind of a so a conversation I definitely want to have with you too. Starting with you, Tyra. We uh, were, at, you know, Van is now going to the John Witherspoon uh, lot or stage, and she's in the car. The Van with with a uh, with two people and the, the crack sandwich and the uh, <laughs> the HIV drama, the black uh, musical where the professor's killing all the white students. Hilarious. Yes. Oh, Wouldn't be surprised uh, if Tyler Perry is producing my, those films. My favorite speak. line actually was one that um that Lincoln clip, bro. When she goes, bro. I hope you get shot in the get theater. Shot. <laughs> He's like, what? Man, it's uh, oh, laugh man. on top of laugh, man. But again, Tyler, the conversation that's in this car. We support everything black. Uh, even OJ, even OJ. Oh. 
<laughs> your opinion on that that subject matter again and and i try my best to support everything black but there's 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 uh you know limits to that you know i like i said i haven't watched the tyler perry project in many many years and there's a very variety of different projects i'm just like i haven't watched power and stuff like that but just your your thoughts on that commentary on just blindly supporting everything black yeah. not really paying attention to the the message that it has and the impact that it can have. And, uh, you know, they mentioned the BET Awards, the 30 yeah. NCAACP Awards. But again, at what expense did they have to do all that? Which is uh, art is subjective, but it's art that's very demeaning at the same time. I loved it. I loved it. It felt like uh, just kind of being at home or in a room full of people who love, yep. you know, Tyler Perry's <laughs> content because, or mm -hmm. even, you know, any any of the directors and writers who, you know, push a certain narrative, like as soon as you say something, it's just like, like what? I, I love, I even love when they were like, when she was like, oh, you know, they won all these BET, You're like, oh, so you just put, you know, a shine in the light. It's all about the white awards. It's right, just like, right. no, it's like, I are trying to, you know, jump on my neck. It's not good. Like, <laughs> I get a lot of, you know, I think, you know, us as content creators, a lot of stuff, like, if we, like, critique even a little bit of something that, you know, has a Black name, it's actually, like, you're not supporting your people. You know, right. you're like, oh, my gosh. Like, <laughs> I don't yep. feel like we should be, you know, it's good. Of course, you should, you know, support other Black people, Black content. Like, we love it. And it's just like, mm -hmm. oh, y'all have to tear everything down. And anytime, I think for anything, if you try to critique anything that Tyler Perry does, anybody, uh, Tyler Perry adjacent, it's just like, but he's giving work. Look at everything he's done. Like he's giving jobs. And I'm like, I, you know, commend him for that, not only for building the studio and giving jobs there or, you know, giving these, uh, I, I, I know at least uh, when, you know, we were watching Tyler Perry films, we would see so many black actors that we haven't seen before. He introduces mm -hmm. a lot of uh, black talent who wouldn't get any opportunities if he didn't give them. So mm -hmm. that that that's awesome but it's just like yeah at what point do we go uh you know we we can have one without the other like he could still especially in the position that he's in now oh you gosh. could do so much so more much. Yeah. <laughs> You could do oh so much more. Oh, like, yeah. you would think that this would be the time to go, oh, I'm not doing what it, I think it was love after diagnosis, the HIV comment. Like, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm not putting out that. I can, you know, not only afford to give people all of these great opportunities, but I yeah. can show us in a completely different light. But, yeah. you know, I think it comes into question us kind of penalizing the people who do, like, you know, the Medea and the, you know, Mr. Brown and, you know, right. like, don't penalize us for what we find for funny and interesting. Yeah. Because somebody you know people are watching these movies but 100%. i did you know <laughs> i did 100%. like the whole conversation around it but it's just like as you know a lot of black people we feel like we have to support every single thing that is black just because right. it's black whether it's good or not and i just i just i don't think that's true <laughs> you know in talking to you now I'm, I'm just looking up tyler perry right quick to see what his next project was and this i think this is a perfect mm -hmm. example to what tyra just said so I'm on his Wikipedia now, and this this year alone he had he's had two films that dropped, and I haven't seen any of them, and I don't plan to. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one was Medea Homecoming, uh, mm -hmm. which uh, you know, I, as Tyra mentioned, I I've seen all the Medea plays, like especially the, you know my grandma had the bootlegs, oh, yeah. and I knew all those plays. <laughs> So now the question is, he comes out with Medea Homecoming, which I think is like the 19th Medea film in like the last decade. But then it's kind of that I give you one, you give me one. He's exclusively working with Netflix with this film. And then fast forward to I think another film that I think is playing at the uh, at certain film festivals, uh, Jasmine's uh, Blues. Blues, which seems to be not you know quote unquote a Tyler Perry you know mm -hmm. comedy you know type of satire. It seems to be like a, a drama that might have some things to say. So it's kind of you know he hits you with a Medea, then he hits you with something mm -hmm. that has a little bit more depth and a little bit more context. Okay. Uh, so that just kind of brings into. I watched it, into... Elliot. Oh, you did? did is this I out? did. I, it was out. What is this? I oh. did. I did not know oh, that 23rd. it was a Tyler Perry film. Not that I'm just mm -hmm. like, oh, I ain't and you see that guys? He wrote. <laughs> yeah. I um I watched it. Yeah. Um, I was like, whoa! I noticed wow. that this movie, not like whoa, whoa, but right, right, just right. All from a Tyler Perry perspective. Perspective, yeah. I was yeah, like, yeah. this is actually something different, and it does have a lot more substance, direction, mm. creativity than many of his other films. But this movie is not praised or talked about, like the Madea Homecoming, <laughs> the Madea Goes to Jail, and it's just right. like you know, you guys scream and shout to the mountaintops that y'all were want you know certain things, but you know when I put them out, they're not as supported or praised as you know. It's like I'm a studio and all this other good mm. stuff. But at the end of the day, I do 
do want to make money for you know what what I'm putting out. I have not heard you know anybody talk about this film the way yeah, that, I mean, you know, yeah. like I didn't even know it was out. I thought it was coming mm-hmm. out later. Yeah, I didn't I didn't even know that this was you know too much associated with him. But when it came on, I they saw. They even have his name. Oh, there's his yeah, poster. Okay, like, oh, Tyler Perry film. Yeah, gotcha. I saw it and I was like, okay, wow. But just uh the story and you know the writing and i thought that it, it said a whole lot that i believe that this was one of the first like play like one of the first writings that he ever did and mm. he went back to something oh, old God. and you know brought it here to go you know hey i, I thought that made a difference because I, I think a lot of us can you know credit that you know the older tyler perry films versus what we have now much, yeah. even the plays have a whole he, lot more he's dope with the pen he's dope yeah, with the yeah. But this, this yeah. movie has you know, it, it has something like it's, it's it's not perfect by any means, but it's light mm-hmm. years away from the Medea and the buffoonery that we get, you know, 10 times mm-hmm. over. But mm-hmm. nobody's talking about it. That's <laughs> interesting. And I, I, I don't know if I got your thoughts, man, on the all black everything supporting things and also just kind of the commentary on. He makes so we just talked about he made Medea Homecoming, which I don't even think had a lot of buzz when it was on Netflix this year. I don't remember even people talking about it. But then he does that and then he try to give us something more creative, yeah, a little bit more depth, and no one yeah. talks about it. So it kind of is uh-huh. like, damn, well, let me just go ahead and <laughs> write the next script from Medea goes to I don't know, uh Africa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I seen Wakanda. someone in the uh someone in the chat says, I can't wait for Medea goes to hell. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> but again, like, I, no, I'll give him his credit where credit is due. Like, he is a playwright, you know, like, yeah, he is very much capable. So that's where I'm like, how, wh- why are you doing all of this? You're in the position now where you really don't need to make another media movie ever again. <laughs> Just yeah. give it up, please. Right. But, uh, um, <laughs> you know, I, I like the uh, the Kendrick Lamar line. You know, I I came to uplift the black artists, but there's a difference between black artists black and black artists. 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 Yep. You know what I mean? And we gotta yep. we gotta make sure that we kind of support in mm-hmm. the uh, stuff that is good yep. and that you know. I, I think given everything a shot, like I'm never gonna like you know. Uh, I, I don't know. Like, I I don't think there is a problem with something winning like just BET awards or an OACP award, but like we then have to have those awards um, made sure that they're kind of like reviewed at a higher standard where right. like it actually means something right. for them mm-hmm. to, uh, yeah. Well yeah. said, man. Well yeah. said. It's, I think it yeah. speaks to uh, Tyler Perry in general because I think he's gone on record several times. I think he still has that mentality, like that, that hungry mentality that I'm doing everything, I'm writing everything. I'm produ- like, he's very adamant about him not having a writer's room. And it's like, you could bring in a bunch of new talent, people with, you know, <laughs> different ideas to, you know, write and put out so many different things who wouldn't get an opportunity at a different studio, but he is just choosing not to. And he wants to be the main membrane mm-hmm. of everything that he puts out. Yeah. You know, Tyler, that is a perfect segue to a little clip that I uh, that I have for you all that if you were wondering if this was a Tyler Perry reference, if you were wondering <laughs> where the title comes from, well, yes, it, it, it has, it has a, a meaning to it. I'm gonna play a quick clip for you all and we will see you on the other side. So I don't know if you know this, but all shows, on television have a writer's room and most of the time there are 10 people 12 whatever that write all these television shows right well i have no writer's room nobody writes any of my work i write it all why am i telling this i wrote all of these scripts by myself in 2019 What's my point? Work ethic. There you have it. There you have it. Work ethic. Work ethic. <laughs> Work ethic. Uh, so there, there's where the title wow. comes from, ladies and gentlemen. And it also I didn't goes think to. About that, Elliot. Yeah, yeah. When I was like, this feels that title feels so familiar. Tyler Perry and I Google. I'm like, ah. And, and again, it goes back to um, we always talk about the timeline of the show and and and. and Donald Glover and a lot of writers always said that when they were obviously in confines of the pandemic, a lot of the references and jokes were very 2019, very 2020. And hence, you know, this episode being very much a moment when Tyler Perry came out and he had a lot of a lot of pushback. A lot of people were like, 
this explains a lot. <laughs> you know, you got a black man writing these stories about black women and, and black experiences. It, it makes 100% sense now where this kind of comes from. And y'all saw those stories. that, And that goes back to a scene that we'll talk about Mr. Chocolate and why it's even funnier, writing his own stuff and, you know, just pages on pages on pages of uh, the piano writing here. But yeah. very, very interesting moment. And again, Donald Glover, man, the research this man has to do to pull these uh, these references is just, mm -hmm. it's just so on point for me. But speaking on point nine, which sandwich would you prefer, my friend? Would you prefer the D'Angelo uh, peanut buttered, you know, the chicken, you know, skin? Or, my friend, would you uh, might want to take a deep dive into a, a crack sandwich? Yeah, crack Tyrone sandwich. Biggums, you know. I'm going to throw in the third one, slacking. actually, and just get one. myself a zoo pie for real. <laughs> I'm just a zoo pie. Yes, I'll take I'm one. I'm going of on that well. scavenger hunt, but <laughs> crack sandwich. This crack sandwich it is good as hell. Mm. I, at, when, at first, I thought when they bit into it, it was going to be. <laughs> It was just like stale bread or something, you know, just like, you know, they, no, they're just crunchy. in hard times. Nah, <laughs> it was, that's a sandwich, you know? No. Okay. It's so good. Okay. It's so um, good. But yeah, uh, actually, I think I might do like a, um, maybe end of the season on one of my last videos, I'll be making sure I have a chicken skin peanut butter sandwich. We got to get that review, bro. We got to hear it, man. We uh, we, we got to hear how that review is. But in mm -hmm. this, you know, now the question is, there's a kind of a meta-ness to it where we're seeing Lottie on screen, talking to her on screen mother about why am I here, mom? Why am I here? I looked at that as number one, obviously she's playing the scene, but then taking it back to Van, looking at this scene, it's almost her talking to her mom, like, you know, subconsciously saying, why am I here? Why am I put in mm -hmm. this position to be on screen with the mother who's eating crack in front of me? Mm -hmm. Your thoughts on that scene, man? Uh, I, I don't know. I, I thought it was a little bit of a reference to um, also like season uh, three when she's having her breakdown where, mm -hmm. I mean, she, mm -hmm. she was just walking around with crack and just yeah. sprinkling it around the hotel room or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> play. But, um, you know, what brought her out of that, like, craziness was just, like, the reference to uh, Lottie, Lottie, right? Yeah. So yeah. I think there is a... Obviously, there's that parallel. Um, mm -hmm. And where she's now realizing that, like, it, you know, being seen as a good mother you know yeah. doesn't just make you know that doesn't mean that that's like just all what you're about like you could be a way well more like verse character within yourself but then also be just seen as you know lottie's mom and right. i don't think that's something to like detract from fans character mm. i don't know no, it's a lot. I mean, Tyra just jumping in there. Number one, the scene, hilarious as we know, but also just the kind of subtext of the I'll, protection, I'll the right parenting. Back, yeah, take time. Uh, the parenting moment of everything. Just your thoughts on that uh, with the senior. Um, I'm laughing at the comments. Love me a crack sandwich. Um, oh, <laughs> uh, nothing. The same thing with the you know the initial scene, like her not being able to separate the two, and it's just like you know, not only why am I here in the scene, but why am I here at all? Yep. And it's about, you know, having that control, like nobody can put me here except for you. And it's just, you know, yep. a callback, not only, only to Van as a parent, but just to, you know, parents in the industry at all. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, you at this point before, you know, we get into signing or whatever, you have full control. So why am I here? Like, if you don't want me here or you don't want to be here, we don't have to be here. So don't subject me to this. If You know, you're, you're not even comfortable with it. Like, mm -hmm. it, it, it was just... Um, <laughs> All, all of the, I just think about all the freaking child stars, like how many kids maybe said, why am I here? Why am I yep. here? Like, cause you know, the execs and everything can only control so much at the end of the day, the children there, their parents place them there. So if you don't want me here, I don't have to be here. <laughs> you know, it's dark. Uh, and I noticed a touchy subject matter for a lot of people, uh, especially in the music industry is uh, Michael Jackson. Yeah. Uh, you know, the goat, the legend. Came with a lot of you know controversy as we know, but when when those documentaries came, I can't think of the name of it. Neverland, I think, was one of them, which I watched. Mm -hmm. It was like completely uncomfortable from the beginning. But my my first thing was, um, of course, you know, Michael Jackson played a huge part. Like, why? In the, first off, why are you surrounding yourself around children? Is is a you know a 
subject for another day, but I always went to the parents. Yeah. Why are you allowing your son or daughter, mostly sons, sons. Kid, uh, yeah, boys, why are you allowing your nine-year-old, eight-year-old, seven-year-old, all the various different ages, uh, why are you allowing them there? Mm -hmm. That was the yeah. big question. And, and like you said in this episode, it poses like why are these parents allowing their kids to, to be in these positions? So again, not to open those can of worms. I know, again, people have their opinions on, on, on Mr. Jackson, uh, but just, yeah, your thoughts, Tyra, again, on that position of, of yeah. parenting and, and putting <laughs> yourself in a position to protect your kids at all costs. The exact same things like so many people as they try to do with a uh, band, put all the glitz and glamour of what this opportunity could be for her. And it's just mm -hmm. like as soon as those parents get that opportunity, if not for themselves and their children, mm -hmm. they surrender like almost all control. And it's just like you're subjected to whatever the studio or the execs or whomever want, wants you to do, because not only, you know, is this, you know, fun and we get all this money, but. I mean, are we going to say no, like, and miss this opportunity? And then you yeah. just continue to kind of see the parents maybe push the limits to what, uh, you know, they're able to do to the fact yeah. that, to the point that sometimes parents aren't even uh, on set or, you know, they're just so trusting, of, you know, oh, this is, you know, this is a job. Like, no, it's like they relinquish all, you know, train of thought, all the protection mode, all of that goes out of the window just to be afforded the opportunity. And mm -hmm. you're literally leaving your children at the hands of, uh, this is a stranger. These are strangers for the most part. And, you know, everybody's just a little too trusting, in my opinion, just because this is the industry. Yeah. <laughs> And again, I know, like I said, I know some people, you know, they say it's all, you know, but, you know, whatever, yeah. um, you know, he's, he's no longer here to defend himself. So, I'll, you know, we'll leave that be, but yeah. uh, uh, Tyra, did you follow that tire that, uh, Tiffany Haddish, uh, Aerie Spears yes. situation? Yes, absolutely. Oh my <laughs> goodness. I, I wasn't aware of it. Um, obviously I knew who they, I know who they are, but I, I saw the video. I saw the, the actual video Tyra. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Like what in the world, as they said in this thing, like what was their mom? And and obviously I know that the, the situation got resolved, but man, parents. I remember be that funny or guy better. clip from yeah. way back when because it used to be up like there was nothing. Of course, now and eventually yeah, they, they took it down. Time. But yeah. I remember seeing that clip and it was partially why I oh kind of because you know, I think we all are familiar with A Re Spears more so from that TV, and you mm -hmm. kind of associate mm -hmm. people with the character. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, what are you two doing here? And you know, when <laughs> when did anybody ever think that this was going to be okay or be funny? Well, funny. But yet again, oh we goodness. have uh, that <laughs> mother thought that this was going to be, oh, it's just, it's an opportunity. opportunity. And I can just not only, you know, let my kids participate in this, but I'm going to let yeah. them go without me. Like, where? <laughs> that that just seems insane, but it's this happens all the time, and it's really, really unfortunate. And now, later on down the line, some, you know, up 10 years later, you have these kids or adults now coming back to say that, oh, this affected me in this way, yeah. and I would like to be, you know, paid whatever amount. And then that, that just begs the question, too, because, of course, we saw later on that these... Um, adults at this point they did you know decide to prosecute and you know pursue on yep. with an actual case they took yep. a payout yep. so it's just yep. like uh yep. yeah like you know it's, it's still once again we're not really standing on any principle about you know how this affected we went ahead and just you know we, we got what we came for we came for the money like that check Come yeah that check which again goes back to and 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 now just to kind of uh, catch you up to speed, man. We're just kind of talking about it again, parenting, man. Where again, mom, Lottie saying to Van or saying to her mom, but subconsciously saying, you know, metaphorically, mom, why am I here? And it kind of pivoted into MJ around kids and the parents, and you know, mm -hmm. we talked about Tiffany Haddish, man. Do you, do you have any thoughts about just kind of that conversation and, and parenting or lack of parenting when putting their kids in these positions? Yeah, uh, I mean, not really. Uh, just again, I'm not like a father or anything. Um, and that's probably for the best <laughs> right now. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I really, I, I don't know if I would be comfortable at that stage. Yeah. Um, I'm not <laughs> sure. Not. <laughs> but oh, God, if, if you, um, watch the have you guys watched the rehearsal with like nathan fielder or whatever i heard it's great i haven't that i haven't it, seen it yet. Really, Tyra, have you? I, I don't i don't want to uh spoil it or anything but there is this like point in the show where a uh, little kid kind of gets all wrapped up in in the rehearsal mm -hmm. and the lines are kind of blurred for this young kid's mind about how she uh, about how um you know who's their who's their father really like is it like this 
portrayal of like uh you know what's on tv or mm-hmm. it does is that seeping into the real life and i don't know that could be very traumatic and yeah you know you gotta oh, yeah. watch yourself on that the rehearsal too by the way not it's on uh hbo right mm-hmm. hbo yeah okay i gotta Same check it out with yeah, it's, telling it's homeboy home. shut up <laughs> right we thought it was real so you know hey is my mom really out here eating crack sandwiches you know what's going on like Just my I, I can't you know separate the two <laughs> Listen, guys, um, you know, Tower and Nine, there's sometimes the internet does some magical things. Y'all see some comments. Hey, B, why don't you get on the call, man? Where's B Avery at, man? Can we get him on it? <laughs> um, I don't know if y'all listen. Can y'all do me a favor and put uh, Elliot Tower and Nine to, to get a million dollars? Can y'all put that? Because y'all spoke something to existence, and I'm talking about this right here. <laughs> What's going on, B? What's going on? He's here. In the What's up? What's up, B? What's going on? You know, just trying to enjoy my crack sandwich, you know? <laughs> 10 out of 10, what we rating this thing, man? Is it crunchy? <laughs> a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Hey, man, we doing good, man. We doing good. How you doing on this Sunday? Pretty good, pretty good. What's up, Tyra? Nice to meet you, Nine. What's nice nah, to meet yep, you? Nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you, man. Uh, Damn. Love, love an earrings, Tyra. Love an earrings. Oh, thank oh, you, you, thank man. you. Tyra always coming through with the with the swag. <laughs> always coming through. <laughs> but Brandon, man, we we've been conversating, man, and having a good old time doing so, man. So many topics we covered, man. But just kind of uh, as you jump in, just kind of your general opinion on this episode, and and uh, also, why don't you introduce yourself to the people that might uh, be seeing you for the first time? Yeah, man. Well, if this is your first time seeing me, hello, hello, hello. I'm uh, Brandon Keith Avery. B Avery. Just my opinion reviews. Um, you can follow me on social media. My handle's on the screen. Why would you want to follow me on social media or subscribe to my channel? I do movie reviews. I do spoiler movie reviews. I do series reviews. I do television recaps on whatever streaming. If I'm lucky, I may get an interview. Um, I'm always, well, not always going live, but I, I have a live uh, every Sunday, 6, 6.30 p.m. CST. Uh, all of the movie and entertainment news that happen in the week. You know, I break it down. We talk about it. I may either be by myself or have a guest, uh, but I just like to geek out on camera, you know, talking about everything that I love as far as uh, movies and television. As far as this episode is concerned, I liked it the first time, but I loved it the second time. I just found it more and more hilarious. Um, I think I've watched it three times now or just about two and a half. And I thought it was phenomenal. All the shots and jabs that was fired at Tyler Perry. And being serious, but goofy at the same time with with yeah. Ern dressed up as a Mr. Chocolate, being ridiculous, <laughs> you know, in, in, in all of his makeup and wardrobe. But uh, I found it funny. Um, I'm also listening to you guys' commentary on Van's parenting. What's up, Zia? How you doing? How you doing? And uh, that was con- that, that was a standout to me as well. Um, you know, she was concerned, uh, but at some point in time, it didn't seem like she was concerned. But uh, it was it was an interesting episode overall, and I, I did I didn't I did enjoy it. It's not my favorite after season. I still want to give that to episode four, uh, mm-hmm. but this was still another good one. Gotcha, man. Gotcha. Well, just jumping right into it, B. And again, I'm so appreciative you're joining me as well as Tyra and Nine. And again, guys, their links can be found in the description of this video. Click the button, subscribe, and check out their awesome content. And of course, you know while you guys are here, hit that thumbs up, share, comment, all that good stuff. B man, we're we're, uh, we're in the, we're we're just getting into the craziness. But one of the scenes that I want to touch on and get your thoughts on first is again, the whole no one knows what's going on. Uh, the security guard is an intern as posing as a security guard. We have this young lady here who's directing her own pilot and starting at the same time. It's a hot mess, B. It's it's a lot of craziness, shenanigans going on, and it just kind of just speaks to. Again, the Tyler Perryism, from which I understand of Tyler Perry, a lot of from even someone in the chat or mentioned earlier that they have worked with Tyler Perry. Uh, it's it's a lot of chaos. It's a lot of all right. Move on to the next shot. You know, let's mm-hmm. get this going. Mm-hmm. Let's reuse, quickly. repurpose this set, and it's it's a very chaotic <laughs> experience. B, your thoughts on this scene and just the the nature of no one really knows what's going on. I think it's hilarious, um, and I can only imagine. I wish I would have saw that comment from the person. Uh, that said it is a bunch of chaos because if it is like that man donald glover and the writer team knocked this out the park mm-hmm. you know i mean how, how can you not know what's going on it doesn't make any sense and uh that kind of just goes into the title of the episode you know because i know tyler perry is quoted in saying that man had a, a stack of um was it on social media he posted like what 22 uh scripts and then yeah, it, yeah that's crazy <laughs> and, then, and then you know when we go into his room you know he has that there like 
like a, a whole nother coffee table full of scripts, but also memo pads like falling out the window. So yeah, his 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 war his room with the guards, his his whatever lair, it was a perfect representation of what's going on on set right there because she looks confused as I am. Yeah, not knowing what's going on. So mm-hmm. hilarious, hilarious. Mm-hmm. I mean, nine from the game. We'll we'll fix it in post to <laughs> adding a random girl <laughs> off the streets to pop up in the scene. And again, we got security guards who is interns and interns who are directors. It's just a hot mess. And I, your thoughts on again the chaotic the chaotic chaotic nature to this. And was there any more depth than anything you pulled out of this kind of what's going on here? And, and also the pro- lack of professionalism. Uh <laughs> I don't know if it's lack of, I'm, you know, I'm not in the industry, right? But I know that like in movies that it's always about time, time is money or whatever. There is definitely a level of, uh, um, I, I, well, I think that the one thing that Tyler Perry, especially that work ethic, like the real life work ethic thing is like, he's taking a lot of pride in the fact that he doesn't have a writer's room. I'm like, come on, man. Like, just collaborate. <laughs> collaborate with some people. Like, again, like, I couldn't even, um, uh, like, even this right here, like, what we're doing right now, it almost seems like he's anti that, like, just, like, getting other people's work. Like, who right. is actually reviewing his scripts and he's just, like, writing them? He's just, like, done. <laughs> Done, done, done. Perfect. Done. Like, come on now. Yeah, <laughs> another golden one. Right. But <laughs> another one. <laughs> but like, yeah. And then his uh, like, oh, we'll just fix it in post. Like, yeah. at that point, like, aren't you then just like kind of just forgoing all quality? You're mm-hmm. just yeah. And we we already know that like he gets slammed for his wigs too. He needs to step that up too. <laughs> so, so many. So many things. Tyra, your thoughts again on the chaos and the craziness as we kind of pivot over to Van approaching Mr. Chocolate. Just your thoughts on this kind of the, the wildness going on. Nothing. The same thing. Like, of course, we know by now that he uh, prefers all the quantity and we don't get out, you know, a whole mm-hmm. lot of quality. It's just like, look what I'm able to produce consistently all alone by myself. Mm-hmm. It's just all me. <laughs> like, uh, you know, I think we are beyond the point of saying that, you know, he isn't, despite how you feel about, you know, his movies, he is, you know, brilliant. He has done a whole lot solo Mm -hmm. so there's no need to prove you know who you are and what you're capable of work ethics like no we don't we don't need you to you know do that anymore yeah it would be Mm -hmm. nice to see something else and you know give give somebody else an opportunity but i also love the fact that it's just really you know playful laughs here and surreal that you know nobody ever sees him nobody knows what's going on but you know like for a fact that this is probably how it really is like we are just working this is just work these are opportunities i'm on set Mm -hmm. i'm doing these things we'll fix it in post i don't know what's going on Mm -hmm. i just know that I'm getting paid at the end of the day and it's courtesy of Mr. Chocolate like it, it's just all about that like I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of people at the actual studios have no idea what's going on or what scene that we're in we were told to put on this wig and get in the shot and that's what we're going to do and we'll, we'll, you know put it put it together later which is really unfortunate because he yeah. has the resources to do so much more. Mm-hmm. And, and again, doing a little bit of uh, behind the scenes, looking into some of the stuff that's been said about this man, Tyler Perry. Uh, back in, I think it was 2009, he was uh, there was a lawsuit from the Writers Guild on mm-hmm. uh, uh, labor laws. He was breaking a lot of labor laws and kind of doing a lot of stuff that was in, um, that was deemed, you know, bad. So I mean, it really? does kind of again plays. Yes, yeah, I'll pull up the article here in a second. But yeah, there's a lot of stuff. Just and I think he ended up end up getting it resolved or something like that but it just again it speaks mm-hmm. to again, tyler perry donald glover doing you know all the little isms and, and things that's been said about him um and, and put it into this episode and this being an example of just people running around not knowing what they're doing not proper security not proper you know uh <laughs> directors and, and dps and all that stuff it's just uh, a prop gun. don't shoot me man yeah. this is a prop gun <laughs> <laughs> which i hate perfect film segue war of God. We... what was yeah. what was that well, like is that an actual film or what was that film this is from the film war, war of God. God. oh my goodness I, is it's, that like uh, an actual what is that from I have no idea, but I know that it's probably a film that uh, is, is probably on the slate uh, now for Mr. <laughs> Tyler Perry that we can look forward to uh, in, in coming coming soon to a theater near you. But shout out to Lisa uh, with the super chat. Donald Glover had the same fast suit as Elvis. You know what, Lisa? That is a perfect segue into and shout out to you with the super chat. Appreciate the love and support there. 
that is a perfect segue into meeting the man, the myth, the legend, Brandon, starting with you. When we go into Mr. Chocolate's lab, and the first thing I notice, again, if there was any question, if this was a Tyler Perry dig, when he turns around and looks at her, uh, Van and says, hello, I was dead. <laughs> I was dead B. Your thoughts on number one, introducing us to this character and the piano and the scripts and the no writer's room, just your whole thoughts on this sequence, man. Um, I don't know what to think, Elliot. Um, I wanted to laugh, but I also kind of thought Vanessa was about to die or go into the <laughs> twilight zone or something. Yeah. Because I did get those Teddy Perkin vibes. You know, oh, yeah. like, okay, this is, you know, not going to end well. Yeah. That's, <laughs> I, it's same, yeah, same wardrobe person, I'm pretty sure, you know, mm -hmm. that came through the mm -hmm. second time around. But I was, uh, I, excuse me, I started laughing. But I, then when I realized it was him, but I, I uh, it, it was it was crazy because the whole time I thought it was Jaiman Hansu. Oh, so the that, voice. That actor. Mm -hmm. It sounds it similar. Sounded yeah. Like him. yeah. Yeah. So I was really expecting him to see that. I mean, expecting to see that. But when I saw it was Glover, I was like, this guy right here is crazy as hell. And it was so over the top and stupid. But he was so committed in the role, just like knowing it was silly. Like, I just have to know. I want to see a behind the scene on like how many takes it took to get through that scene without them laughing because i'm pretty sure um you know he was and well i mean he was typing on this thing but it was also a, 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 a piano at the same time piano. Yeah. yeah so it, it was just it was just it was just like i said earlier the perfect visual representation of the chaos that happens in tyler perry studios with a billion scripts you know no punctuation just just drafts everywhere you know nothing but randomness you know Hey, tell the little girl to say that she's pregnant, but you know, <laughs> I mean, yeah. like, it's a kid show. Thank you know, it's a kid show. It doesn't Thank matter. You. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, you know, and so it, it was a hilarious, scary mess all bought up into one. Oh, but nine man when we go into again we we talked about it earlier who is the man behind the intercom who is mr chocolate well it is a uh a doppelganger of tyler perry uh himself uh played by donald glover and like b said yeah as soon as we saw him I'm like, oh yeah this this might end up like a teddy perkins shotgun someone might end up dying it might be van luckily it didn't turn out that way but your thoughts well, on this prosthetics and all the stuff going on here man the prosthetics are great but i want to kind of like rewind just a little bit because yes. we have Van, she gets in and then she's going through this crazy yeah. passage with her. Mm -hmm. And that was a, 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 this has been a trope, right? Like these for all of the doors. Yeah. Yeah. These passageways, these portals to mm. get what they really want. We have Earn like squeezing through to get to uh, D'Angelo. We mm -hmm. got uh, uh, Al and Ern going through the uh, Schmurder exit in episode mm -hmm. four and uh, mm -hmm. um, that old weird, you know, escape from Atlantic Station. Um, and I really wonder what they're trying to say about that, these instances of like mm. these kind of like transformations or like, you know, entering a different realm to get to what you want. What they want, to yeah. Or something new. Um, and, uh, but a piano though, oh my God. <laughs> when he said Steve Jobs as a piano, and then it's just that off putting notes, you know, of, uh, of music. I was just like, this is peak amazing television. Like, I, I just was feeling it so hard because it just uh, sets a vibe. Yeah. Uh, it, it got me creeped out a little bit. And mm -hmm. then it got me laughing when he turns around. He's like, I don't know. It just, the absurdity is just up and up and up. And I also wonder if it's one of those situations because in the Teddy Perkins episode, uh, a bit of trivia I heard was that, um, you know, Lakeith wasn't aware who was, was going Donald. to be playing. So mm -hmm. I wonder if they pulled that same thing with uh, Van. I wouldn't and, be surprised. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't uh, be surprised. Yeah. It brings that in. The, in the, if, look, I, I got a, a screenshot of her face. Maybe this was the first time she literally saw him in the suit, which plays into. <laughs> and we've heard, like, you said, so many different Hollywood stories of actors. Like, let's, uh, I don't know why Stranger Things is coming to mind, but I think the kids, when they first saw Vecna, was like one of the first, uh, like, mm -hmm. a scene that they shot to kind of enhance the fear and the scare of the character. So I would not mm -hmm. be surprised if this is the case, that this was uh, Zazie Beat's first time seeing Donald Cover <laughs> in the suit. Tyra, with my man again from the Hello to. <laughs> Would you like a grit? 
I mean, come <laughs> on, man. Who who comes up with this stuff? Donald Glover does. Oh, his team. Yeah. He, 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 I was creeped out. I, I was creeped out slightly because, you know, once again, with that going back to that Wiz reference, we have her, you know, get past the guards. And, you know, as soon as we get there, which, you know, I think said a lot about, you know, how is Tyler Curry really doing, you know, with him having to have all these work ethics and, you know, you're putting out all these things. And you would think that since he's so commanding, has all this control, he's all revered in the studio. It will be some type of system, some some type of you know sense of normalcy, and it's just it's crazy in there. But um, I was nervous before she even got there when um, she acts like, "Give me my daughter back," and he's like, "Uh, no." no. Yep. <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's like what? Just the the type of uh, person he was to just feel like I already know the kind of mother you are, the kind of circumstances that you may be in. What are you going to do? Tell me no. Like, I like Lottie. He just felt so possessive and felt like, oh, she's mine now. That was like really scary to me that he just felt like he had all of this control just mm -hmm. because he felt like he knew, like, I, I know who you are as a mother. Like, what are you going to do? Turn me down. You're going to miss this opportunity. That's like my mm -hmm. child now to do it as I want to. If I want to put mm -hmm. her in a million scenes, that's what I'm going to do. But the whole, everything was like, I love the little John Singleton hat and glasses. Like, that, that was funny. <laughs> And just the whole, the prosthetics and everything, the grits, like even the grit reference in the first place, because uh, you know Tyler Perry and the whole grits, like, would you like a grit? Like, yeah, I built up a tolerance over the years. Oh Doesn't hurt me. Like, oh my God. <laughs> it was it, it was crazy, though, but it's, um, he was insane and creepy, but it's like, what does that say about somebody like a Tyler Perry or anybody mm. who who's adjacent because it's like if you are doing this and conducting yourself this way like you may go go a little insane like a little power crazy oh, like, yep. he was very like crazy up there like I'm like oh my god it was to the point where I wasn't sure like if Dan was going to make it out make or it you out. know yeah. what was going to happen or is she, was she going to get Lottie back you know what <laughs> what was going to go on but I, well, I, one I, thing I, that uh, I, I thought it. was actually interesting um because I want to hear your thoughts about that too is that like when he says that like oh this place kind of runs itself mm -hmm. you know I, I wonder it's what baby. type of commentary that they were trying to yeah it was his baby but he doesn't really like have control of it it's, he's kind of like yeah. uh, more cogging uh the machine what what did you guys think about that the same thing, them people not, you know, everybody over oh, here, we're just working. We don't know what's going on. It's like, I'm not even mm -hmm. at the point where I have to, you know, I don't even have to try that hard. These people are so hungry mm -hmm. to, you know, just be attached to something and work and, you know, be a part of the machine that they're not questioning anything I want to do anyway. Everything right. runs itself around here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about you, B? I'm sorry, go, what was the question? The uh, just the whole idea of Tyler, well, Thomas, Tyler Perry, uh, Mr. Chocolate <laughs> saying that his baby, which again, I think a lot of undertone is episodes like parenting and, and what parents allow things to be done and not, but he's at this point is out of control, he doesn't have any control over his quote unquote kid. Uh, and these people are just running around, running themselves. Any commentary that you have on that? Well, sure. actually, that was kind of weird for me. Um, because mm -hmm. he was. I mean, I, I I got everything up until this point of how, you know, he's supposed to be representing Tyler Perry, but kind of like what Tyra said, where he kind of lashed out and started screaming at them time. This is my child. I was like, okay, I don't imagine Tyler Perry ever doing anything like that. So it was a little weird for me and uncomfortable. Um, I don't, I guess that part flew over my head, but you know, um, I don't know. That's, that's just how I felt when I, when I, when I came, when I came across that. Uh, yeah, I no, think I, it's, oh, yeah. go ahead, Elliot. No, no I thought no. it was just uh, not collectively. I thought that this was uh, image or references for, you know, multiple execs, like, you know, anybody who's over, you know, Nickelodeon studio, just anybody. Like, I, yeah. I, I thought of all of everybody as a whole and not just Tyler Perry. So I thought it was a collection yeah. of people for mm -hmm. people who, you know, certain people who feel like they possess mm -hmm. these child actors and they can do whatever with them. Not to say that, you know, this is what Tyler Perry is doing. I, I didn't think that at all. Mm -hmm. well, I, I, I got you. I, and I will say this. Um, uh, and you brought up the parenting, of course. Um, I'm not a parent, so I may sound silly, but it does. I, I like that Van said, no, you know, mm -hmm. you're not going to be a part of this production. You're too young and you don't know the ramifications of your decisions or the repercussions, you know, because, uh, of course, a child is going to be super duper excited, you know, to mm -hmm. be on a TV show and they be something funny. different. They come you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but they don't know what they're getting themselves into, you right. know. Mm -hmm. And we've heard so many horror stories of childhood actors 
and you know how they turn out you know later on in life not judging anybody but i i've, I've noticed a pattern over the years mm -hmm. and um you know lolly 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 thinks it's just you know pancake sunshine and rainbows but mm -hmm. she's being exploited and taken advantage of so mm -hmm. it was very it was interesting i mean yeah van was trying to take responsibility towards the end of the episode because she was such in a nervous panic you know because she thought her daughter was missing but yeah. earlier on she just you know oh, i'm just gonna do this and da 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 you know so i don't know that was an interesting transition to me yeah no i agree and and to tyra i definitely agree with you on, on going back to nine's question with the maybe uh the reference to out of control i think um to tyra's point someone also mentioned in chat as far as just maybe this is a commentary on the hollywood system that it does kind of get out of control i mean how many mm -hmm. times have we heard so many different I'm, I'm thinking of you know b we always talk about marvel and dc and, and the difference between how marvel runs their projects as a little bit more you know maybe my, not so more recent than it has in the past where it seems like kevin feige doesn't have a hold on all his productions but then you look at dc which is just like ezra miller running around literally running around doing craziness was, right. um you know everything going on with the the set on the Just justice ezra league miller. and it's just like who's running this show like where is yeah. the control and it's just like mm -hmm. sometimes you build this this um the studio and you built this this kind of uh, um persona of everything is going good and it just kind of gets out of hand and you lose control and your ego gets in the way whether you know it's him saying I, I own the police i own half of college park it's like you have that power now and it's just like you have too much power that you don't even know how to um you know wrangle the, the troops and get things under control so so much so much Go ahead now. were you guys feeling any um Almost, it's almost like Tyler Perry meets like Harvey Weinstein in my head. Like it was just Everything, like all of it. This yeah. is like the grooming type of yeah. I don't know, yeah. just the way he started no, talking about he, Lottie. Um, it was just like really weird. No, when he said like 18, you can't keep forever. her forever, she's like yep. not gonna be eighteen forever. 18 like forever. I can still like, get her. I was like, oh my like, god, yikes. Scary. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, no, one hundred percent agree. And you know, it and I think uh B and nine and Tyra even said it too. There's comedy in this moment, there's, there's confusion, there's a little bit of fear, but going back to the comedy, I don't know, last week I mentioned how driving off with the grandpa on a truck just had me dead for like five minutes straight. Mm -hmm. When Van throws the grits at <laughs> Mr. Chocolate and the scream, and, and again, Donald Glover, so many, you know, he's a great uh, writer, director, but the acting, the commitment, this like B said, I would have been dying. Like, I don't know if I would have been able to do this take. Ah! I'm just fine. I've grown a tolerance to grit. I couldn't. I, I lost at that point. I had to pause and reflect myself for a minute. Uh, Brandon, man, I, again, I know the scene was just like, where are we going with this? But I mean, I know you had to have a good laugh out of that, man, with the grits being thrown in, in, in that scene. Yes, it was freaking hilarious, you know, because I thought, I thought she really got him. You know, but he's like, I'm fine. And out, out of all things, I've grown an immunity to grits. Like, it's this, you're insane, dude. You're insane. <laughs> but what's crazy is it was grits, and apparently it wasn't hot. So what was, wasn't crazy. He ate, he still ate it. Who eats cold grits? That is one of the nastiest things. Oh, well, it had to be hot. He's bleeding at the end, so it had to be, some of it had no, to be No, it had to be hot. hot. You know, yeah. cold grits are not going to move. Well, right. then, but then, yeah, that's <laughs> right. then he was holding his neck. He was holding his neck, and he was, uh, when they left, he was like, hey, uh, can you please call the cops? I'm losing <laughs> no, blood. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, are you, are you, what, what's going on? Are you hurt or you're not hurt? Man, it was this stupid, <laughs> funny, um, you know, hilarious mess. I, I loved it, man. I, I was down laughing. Nine man, and you just quoted, I'm fine. Oh uh, man, I mean, serious, I don't know where, where Donald comes up with this man in the writer's room. This is just some of the funniest stuff I've seen. But to say that he's built up a tolerance, tolerance. To him, though, happened that right. means it's like it's like <laughs> so much so that he's immune to it. I don't know, oh, oh, man. Uh, Tyra, your thoughts on, on this? Did you, did you die laughing? <laughs> I, I was I was laughing. I didn't stop laughing from the point that he like literally said hello and would you like a grit? Like I right. was I was laughing the entire time. But though it was uh it was it was I was like laughing, but I was creeped out. Like something is wrong with this man. Like the fact that he is able to be in the position that he is in and have liberties to do, but you're in something is missing upstairs. Like the whole fact that you built up a tolerance. It's like how many parents came up here looking. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> or seeking nice. to, you yeah. know, find their children or whoever right. came up to throw grits in your face for you to build up this tolerance. It's like, this mm -hmm. is not my first rodeo. Or even when he gives her the visual perspective and kind of plays out her life and he's been watching her all day. Like exactly. all of you parents, y'all are, you know, the exact the same, same way. thing. Yep. Same story, same backgrounds. You know, you don't have a lot of money. Come on, stop with the, you know, the show. I have a tolerance. You're not the first person to throw grits in my face. Sign this contract and, you know, let's get this money together with Lottie. She's mine now. Like, crazy. Super crazy. And, and to that uh, point. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, no. uh, two references. that Because I isn't that, like, also a scene that... Um, uh, in happened in films, like a Tyler right? Perry movie. I think so, right. bro. Hold on, I'm gonna type it up while you uh, while you bring it up. But Let's then see. the other reference I, is also just the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory reference. Just the way that he kind of presented it was, mm -hmm. um, I remember where he like trips and falls in front of the audience, and they like all gasp, and then he's just like, uh, "No, I'm good." <laughs> and then you know, just kind of continued. Just the way he was like kind of walking off. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I was getting a lot of that. Um, Yep, yeah, there it, it is. There's a uh, lot of you found it. You said, there, yeah. Right? I'm trying to see what movie this is from. I think it's from A Diary of a Black Woman. I might no, be it's wrong. It's uh, Family Reunion. Family Reunion. Okay. Yeah, here's the scene here. Um, Blair, Mr. Underwood. Blair Underwood. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> I here remember we go. that. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. Hold on. Let me, I'm not going to play the audio because I don't want to get the stream pool, but yeah. yep. There it is. Oh, ah, yeah, and yeah. the pow. Perfect. Oh, okay, yeah. Just fine. Great call. Great call. Away. <laughs> <laughs> away from that. Damn. That is hilarious. That is hilarious. Uh, but no, uh, Tyra, you brought it up as far as the, the stereotype. You have the, the mother that can't afford food. You have the hip hairstylist, the, the, the light-skinned um, individual, the love interest, to I bet you have a black baby daddy. No, he's dark-skinned. <laughs> she, he, he created this whole narrative of just like stereotypical, quote-unquote, what he believes. Again, she brings up the whole art. You're not an artist. You just take advantage of un, you know relevant stuff and just thinking it's art that, that people can relate to. Um, just and, and again, like I said, you mentioned Tyra, but any more thoughts on on again just the, putting her in a box and just following her and building her uh, a narrative that she's just one type of woman or a chocolate uh, woman, as he puts it. I mean, it's unfortunate. <clears throat> I mean, we do know now at this point we do have a lot of people who are in a box and who do decide yeah. to you know you know what I'm going to sign up for this. What else you know? What other choice do I have? But I love that we got the at least a depiction here where we have a parent who decided not mm -hmm. to do it. So often we don't have anybody decide not to do anything because there. I think every once in a blue moon we'll have a child star or maybe somebody come out to say, oh, you know, my mom thought I wasn't ready. She waited until I got older. I got I went to college and. We never hear that as often as, you know, I got a commercial at four and then from then on I was, you know, whisked into all these sitcoms and then, of course, nine times out of ten it kind of ends in tragedy, unfortunately, and they, you know, sometimes come out of it, sometimes they don't, so I'm glad that here at least we got a depiction of where, even though it's false, a parent did not, you know, decide to take the bait and she put Lottie first in that minute. Yeah. B, I know you got to head out in a little bit, man. Just wanted to get your thoughts on, again, the uh, how Van kind of switched up the narrative and show that she's not going to go down that path, and uh, him trying to put her in a box, man. Yeah, um, she the the line that was used hit the nail on the head of how you know he he just makes the stereotypes and just you know we can't relate to it. I was also watching your review as well because you said the same thing. Some of the stuff may be true, but it's just the negative stuff. You know, mm -hmm. why can't it focus on the positive and the up, uh, uplifting things in our community as well? But like I said earlier, man, I'm proud of Van. She really showed. I mean, I thought she grew <clears throat> in maturity uh, from when we left her at the end of season three. Uh, but to me, she still has some problems, but I love the way she did, like and Tara just said, she took the responsibility, not going to take the bait and be responsible and put Lottie first, especially yeah. with the way the episode ended, uh, you know, with her having the conversation with Lottie as they went back to the crib, you know, and it, it, it really sucks that that's something that, you know, you want to be able to support your child and whatever they are interested in. And it seemed like Lottie was really passionate about staying mm -hmm. on stage because she was screaming and fighting and hollering and kicking. You know, like that's nuts. And you know, she had and uh your boy was like chocolate was like she wants to stay, she wants to stay all the time. <laughs> but I really like the the big girl pants she put on when she got yeah. back to the crib and was like, Hey, you know, um, you don't know what you're gonna be representing or something like that. I don't I don't remember exactly what she said, but 
it was key. It was it was powerful. Uh, before she looked on the back of that business card and, and <laughs> <laughs> definitely agree with him. Before we get your thoughts on this, uh, nine, like I said, B, I know you got some stuff to get to, uh, especially getting your show ready, man. So again, I appreciate you hopping on with the with the cameo from Brandon from uh, just my pain reviews. But uh, B, if you want to outro out, man, and uh, you know, plug the show that we uh, can look forward to later today, man. Yeah, yeah. Let me uh let me do that. You kind of uh you beat me to it. Uh, I just, yeah, it's all good. I check out that check out that DM uh, yes, that sir. I just sent you. And if you can just pull that up, um, I would really, really appreciate it. But yeah, guys, uh later on this evening, I will be ha- uh, hosting my moving news roundup show. It will be popping off at 6 p.m. CST. Uh, some things that I'm definitely gonna be talking about is Henry Cavill. Uh, possibly coming back in the DCEU as Superman. Uh, oh, I don't want to say much, but you know, you're just going to have to check that out and come back at 6, 6 p.m. CST. That's 6 p.m. CST. And um, I don't know, uh, Elliot, if you can see my screen right here. Uh, let me try to share that for you. I got so much going on over here. Oh, well, oh, okay. Here we are. Here we are. Here we are. Uh, share and okay well i'm not gonna be able to share it but elia will be there you go elia will be able to provide you with the link to this and so just come through uh 6 p.m cst i would love to have all of you guys there i mean b you know me i'm a dc head uh so the this the idea that mr henry cavill who by the way complete side note my favorite superman no disrespect to christopher reese and all the other ones that play it but this this is my superman guy so yeah b i will definitely uh hopefully join you a little bit later to share some thoughts on that but yeah guys uh check out brandon not only is it the weekly roundup uh with movie news and tv news but a variety of uh reviews for tv shows uh, i know he just did moon Knight, which was fantastic by the right tyra i know you're a horror fan i know you're not a marvel fan Tyra, give Moon Knight a shot. Werewolf by night. Werewolf, what did I say? Moon Knight by night? Uh, Werewolf by night, yes. Give it a shot, Tyra. You will not be disappointed. But yeah, Brandon, I always appreciate you, bro. And and again, uh, if time allows it, I hopefully can join you a little bit later to talk about some DC news. Sounds good, man. Y'all have a good one. All right, man. All right. Peace out. Peace out. All right, guys. So that was Brandon from Just My Opinion Reviews. Check him out. Links in the description. But wrapping it up again, uh, tossing it back to you on uh, wrapping up the episode and just kind of Van having that parenting moment. And I think Brandon alluded to it, but you mean so much more. You represent so much more. I just want more from you. And I want to protect you as much as I can before the world consumes you. Because inevitably, unfortunately, you do got to let go as a parent. And let the kids make their own decisions. Yeah, that I mean, yeah, it was powerful. That was kind of like the heart of the episode, getting to see Van like that. Um, mm-hmm. And and if I could uh, reference um, what uh, Tyra was saying, is that like you know he called out all of these like stereotypes that she was in, and I think there's something like that you know it's been kind of going over my head that I'm kind of just realizing now is that like it is. Um, you know, having like there's been some controversies with how Van is portrayed on the show, uh, yeah, and yeah, like yeah. the episodes that she has, but then like also having Donald Glover be the one that says those things to her, um, because like again, like he's pointing out all these things, but again, like it's just manipulation, you know, like right. she's kind of been manipulated to be that character and kind of like put in that situation not of her own control she ain't really yeah. trying to do that you put yeah. her as that so i don't know th- there's a lot of uh strong messaging there and there's maybe a higher level uh a higher layer that i'm not really uh like really able to uh, i see what you're throwing no, yeah. I, I see what you're throwing because it is so going back to what you just said i have seen the, the 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 commentary of the lack of um maybe story and and given like we talked about up top van is like she pops up in one episode and then she's absent for like six episodes straight and popping mm-hmm. you know just random and then to you so uh, just to correct me from wrong now you're saying like there's, there might be a little bit of commentary from donald glover himself saying that this- this may also kind be of, a critique of yeah, his own yeah. work his own um, handling that character like, yeah, yeah. hmm that's an interesting. What do you think? What do you think about that, Tyra? He's all deep. That is all deep. <laughs> <laughs> that is all deep. I'm like, I didn't even think about that. But that is, 
if that's what's going on here, like we went, you ever see those little posts that are on Instagram, the art where they zoom in and they zoom in again and it's just, it just goes, I, uh, you know, all of these, <laughs> all these dimensions, like yeah, yeah, that yeah. is so dope. Like, oh my gosh, I, I, like I didn't that. even think about that, but that that's yeah. really creative that he can, you know, like I can turn it around and, you know, put it on myself and on my own show. So that, that's, that's right. Great. Mm -hmm. That's great. Uh, yeah, because I mean, to be fair to your point, I mean, yeah, I mean, I love Van, and I love that Zazzy Beats brings this kind of extra layers to it. But it is just, uh, see, whenever we see Van, it's always associated with Lottie, right? She's yeah. she's more than just a mother, and we've seen her trying to explore other avenues, but it seems to be okay. Let me. Uh, Chase Clout, try to get the Champagne Poppy episode. Mm -hmm. Let me, um, you know, the Hands episode. Let me wild mm -hmm. out and be, let me step out from being a mom. So, yeah, there is, seems to be just like one narrow path that she's been on. So, I, I would love to know uh, if someone gets the opportunity to interview him after the show ends and, and mm -hmm. bring things up and, and yeah. you know, ask that question. But that's a very insightful comments there. Now, this is why we got you here, bro. I'm pulling out these incredible things to make us think. And uh, I think there's something to be said about that for sure, man. Um, but going back to wrapping up the episode and also quick shout out to K Bizzle B with the gr uh, great discussion. Just want to show some support. Well, you just being here and everyone just being here with liking and sharing means uh, the world to me. So that extra layer of the super chat is just ice on the cake. So I appreciate you and appreciate all of you all showing some love and support. Uh, and again, guys, show some love and support to these great content creators by clicking on that description, the link in the description and showing them subscription and following them and showing them some love. So I appreciate you. But um, Ty, we're wrapping up the episode and wrapping up the, the stream here in a bit. Just your thoughts on the commentary that Van gives on her daughter that, you know, I'm going to try to protect you as much as I can, which I think is actually maybe more so a callback to season three where she felt like she wasn't a mom for her yeah. when she left. Uh, and, and just kind of how everything wraps up, especially <laughs> with the card. <laughs> with the, let's have sex in the boiler room. I, I loved it. I think with everything that happened in season three, it's hard to maybe, well, I know for, maybe not for nine, <laughs> but sometimes it's hard for me to piece two and two together and maybe remember and separate things that were maybe jarring so much to now we're like humble and we're at home. And even though it's yeah. still Atlanta, it's still very way far from where we were when we were, you know, eating hands and whatnot. But yeah. uh, <laughs> just the way that she was feeling as a mom and not feeling like she was good enough, she wasn't handling herself. It just seems like now in this uh, episode, especially in the end, she really got some perspective for what her role is and, you know, what it is. Just protecting Lottie, especially going from, I think she said, did she fall asleep at the wheel? Or I, I can't remember exactly what happened at the at the, uh, the end of, but yeah. she, just, you know, left Lottie with her parents because it's just like, I... It I, sounded I like she was it. on the verge of taking her life. If I'm, yeah. I'm going to have to revisit that scene, but I think yeah. you're kind of on yeah. that lines. So yeah. Yeah, she said, like, it was, it, it was getting hard, so I thought it was best yeah. for me to step away. So to see her on the complete opposite side of the spectrum now to where she's really adamant about protecting Lottie and just mm -hmm. like we represent oh, yeah. something and i want to you know protect you as long as i can because once you're of a certain age people like uh mr chocolate can be back you know and you can't protect exactly, forever yeah. and it's, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just like strong I, I girl know, number eight <laughs> i have to make you know the important decisions now for you to maybe have a perspective of who you are as a person as a woman yeah. and what we represent before somebody else tries to come along and tell you what we are or even just what i'm looking forward to especially with the next episode we got mm -hmm. to see their home I was like, this is where they That's live. That's true. That is true. <laughs> and yeah, I think, you know, with the next trailer, we get to see where Al lives. I was like, oh, they live somewhere. <laughs> yeah, especially Al. Yeah. We haven't, what was it? The yes. town home was the last this, time we saw him. Oh, this is great. I really love to see their home. It was like mm -hmm. stepping into a whole new realm. But just to see them uh, get more grounded and just them, you know, walking into their home, like going into her room. Mm -hmm. I, I loved all of that. Like, I was really happy to see, which is crazy. Like, who's going to be happy to see where they live? <laughs> Hey, I, I was so excited to see like oh they're going yeah. home this is their house i was i was listening but i was like look at i'm looking around I'm looking at it yeah. <laughs> yeah. What kind of furniture she got some art on the wall you know, they've been everywhere but atlanta are just simply being at home for so long so that was nice mm -hmm. but i was glad that even though we saw in that moment lottie was you know pretty much throwing a tantrum because she's like she's not connect connecting the two at you know what's not great about this mom like you're messing stuff up for me but it's like mm -hmm. even though she's adamant about being here she's still a child and it's my you know duty to protect her but right. yeah I, I love that and also you know flipping over that that card it's just like yeah you were exactly who i thought you were let's just exactly. throw that out you will i won't mm -hmm. be in any boiler room sir but i thought, mm -hmm. I thought it was great. <laughs> the boiler room the boiler room, <laughs> boiler room sexy. but i i love that she just like sighs and it's like you know you want some mac and cheese yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> 
<laughs> no, I mean, now you got me looking, Tyra. I'm looking at the back of the, <laughs> the home now because I think, it, to your point, Tyra, the last time we saw Van uh, in a home setting was when her and Ern, um, I think it was her apartment that they were, yeah. you know, crashing in all the time. But it looks like, yeah, she's moved out to a, like a, you know, whether it's a little town home or actual home now. So, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, this is definitely, this is definitely like a two bedroom home or something like that. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm peeking a little, the painting on the walls. <laughs> what, is it, what does it mean, man? What does it all mean? Like, uh, but no, it was a great way to end this episode um, with that character arc. And I'm excited to see now, I guess, a question to go back to Nine's thing about the critique of, um, Zazie beats a van. Do we think we'll not necessarily a solo episode, but do we think she will be prominent in the rest of the season? Do we expect to see any of these storylines be uh, present be moving forward? Just because uh, we've heard Earn tell his therapist, like, eventually he's going to have to drop the ball that he Go wants to LA. Get Lottie. And, yeah. you know, if she's not going to Good come point. with him, Good then point. he's going to fight to have Lottie. And I'm like, that is going to be a devastating or hard episode and all and it's so funny not to cut you off now but it's funny it's la we just talked about hollywood i mean that is mm-hmm. literally the the birthplace yeah. of, of uh, right. you know, a lot yeah. of stuff so yeah <clears throat> Oof, that's very yeah. interesting very interesting who do i mean not to open up those can of worms because we got episodes to look forward to but do you do you think that's going to be like a like a dramatic moment or do you think they'll maybe just kind of brush over it or how do you think that potentially could be handled uh because we really haven't the only time I we've seen think, them fight was Helen's episode, I think. Right, exactly. Um I think that it, it, it could be dramatic. I, I you know, I've seen the in the season trailer or whatever that there's some um episode where they're like camping or whatever. Like a camping site, yeah, which might yeah. be the perfect time for him to So tell I her. think that would be yeah. yeah. So I think yeah. they're gonna definitely have some chicanery and shenanigans and be one of those episodes that are like hard but also funny and absurd, you know, do what Atlanta does. So very mm-hmm. interesting. Um Tyra, your thoughts on this reality that could be a hand between these two characters that uh we've been following for the last four years and things not ending in a in a happy happy uh ending i've been waiting for that camping episode like so hard same <laughs> yeah. i've been waiting because we know that that's when Ern is probably going to break the news that yeah. this is what i want to do but mm-hmm. with you know the different paths that we see everybody going on and kind of everybody kind of separating themselves from things that are involved in, you know, the industry, whether it's the music business or, you know, Hollywood, right. you want to go to LA, <laughs> mm-hmm. you want to go to LA. Like mm-hmm. I, I should hope that we're not gearing up for, you know, a blowout or like what is going to happen if she decides like, no, I, you right. know, that's if he's asking, you know, her to go along. We, we right. really just don't even know at this point because Ern has been uh-huh. on some other stuff. <laughs> yeah, we really haven't seen Ern be like a dad centric episode. Yeah. Uh, to see how mm-hmm. he is as a, as a dad. Anytime mm-hmm. we've seen Ern, like, I don't, I don't know when the last time because anytime it's like, oh, I think even with the last church episode, like, oh, she's with the mother. Like, oh, this, is, the this is, this yeah. is, this is what she is, and and then that, and that's just it. So he's not even geared towards just being in dad mode at all. You know, it's just forward thinking and working and being an agent and all these other things. So if you're saying that you're not only you're already distant now, what's going to happen when you go away to L.A.? Right. You're going to be like practically non-existent. That that that's crazy, and I think it's going to change the uh, dynamics of their relationship. Mm-hmm. Which speaking of, I think for Kay Bizzle's question, I don't think they're dating. I think that they're no. just coexisting as co-parents right yeah. now and figuring stuff out. Yeah. I think there's like a lot of love for each mm-hmm. other. Mm-hmm. And it's like, yeah, loving, non-monogamous type mm-hmm. of thing going on. But uh, yeah. definitely like ride or, ride or die for each that other, was, for real. Is that me, you, and L when I think you guys were like, what? I was like, I felt like in that uh, Atlanta, that parking garage, he was mm-hmm. trying to leave her there before. And it's just like, no, I'm coming. But mm-hmm. it was very much so before she said that, like, hey, yeah. I'm going to go check things out. Yep. <laughs> Stay mm-hmm. here. And if everything's on the up and up, I'll come back and get you. And it's just like, no, you're not leaving me here. I'm not trying to be that random baby mama that baby get mama, another yeah. woman, that woman who lives in Atlanta. But it's like, is she going to end up being that woman who lives mm-hmm. in Atlanta? <laughs> Only time. Um, will tell. Um, I'm very excited to see where this goes. Um, I mean, we got what, six, seven, eight, not so we've got four or five more episodes, and knowing next week is uh, seems to be an owl episode, and uh, we've been talking about it for weeks. I mean, there's someone trying yeah. to kill owl, so I, and that's been a, a theme for a very long time, so oh, no. things yeah. might get dark, Oof. and uh, we'll see, we'll see where it goes, Oof. but man. Yeah. 
as I said up top, guys, this is this is my favorite day of the week uh, for these type of conversations with these awesome type of people. Um, and we'll be back later today, guys, because we, we got some dragons to talk about. House we'll be dragons. talking House of the Dragons <laughs> a little bit later tonight. But before we get then, I am so appreciative of uh, our, our special guests here that joined me, especially, you know, Brandon coming in for a little bit. And again, check him out later today with his uh, movie show. Tyra, it is always a pleasure to catch up with you and talk about this show uh and and hopefully we can do this again and tyra please check out Robot by night please do me a favor and let okay. me know what you thought about it <laughs> um, okay. you got you, you got you well, I, I haven't looked at fan. any trailers i had i saw good, good i don't know if i was on your uh your story but i saw yeah. a couple of like it was very nasperatu or something i was like what is tyra, that back there i am mm. telling you right it now this is like the I most violent gory mcu <laughs> thing today and i think you're gonna love it but uh and we're gonna get your outro out here in a second Tyra but uh nine like I said up top bro uh, I've been following your content when I saw you covering this show and have been diving deep into your channel and seeing all the other stuff you bring to the platform and it is uh, phenomenal my friend so keep up the good work uh and hopefully we can uh maybe link up again as we talked about on in the dms hopefully sooner rather than later but I appreciate you man Absolutely. and and wrapping this thing up again going back to you Tyra let the people know where they can find you what's the next retro review that you might oh, have lined up the next so. <laughs> new of you why don't you go ahead and let them know where they can find you. always good stuff of course you can come and find me on my channel my uh, handle is at the bottom for my instagram to see what's coming out next i have minutes to society coming up i am so happy for that Ooh, i have uh shoot us <laughs> somebody Ooh. pay for shoot us that's coming out uh next tuesday and i also have a uh, scream Blackula screen coming up. <laughs> that is going to be very interesting. And as far as new things, I uh, just discussed my uh, Hellraiser situation. That, that That's interesting if you are a fan of the franchise. Uh, I just, of course, posted my episode of Atlanta. I just did New Jack City. That is the best money and time ever spent in your life. Go check that video out. And I just uh, crossed my 8,000 threshold recently last week. And now I am uh, almost 8,500. So I'm on my way to 10K. If you guys could help me get there and reach that milestone for my channel that would be so awesome but, but thank you for having me so much elliot i appreciate it <laughs> of course of course of course guys definitely like i said check her channel out uh tyra i might have to send you uh, a venmo or something uh for tyler perry film you know, oh, get your thoughts on, on uh, <laughs> where those reviews going. Uh, to see your thoughts on that. Uh, but again, Cyra, always appreciative of you uh, and sharing uh, your time. And uh, thank you so much. Uh, and again, nah, my man, it's it's uh, we 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 made it happen, man. And again, hopefully we can do more of these in the future, man. But why don't you go ahead and let people know where they can find your content and and what's next for uh, the nine fans out there, man. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm Nine Nerd Yards on YouTube and on Instagram, Twitter, uh, TikTok. Um, and also, if you guys want to come and join us in the Nine Nerd Yards Discord, we have over 200 people talking about Atlanta right now. Uh, it's been insane. Um, and again, like I think it's one of those shows that so many people have all of these opinions on. I, I'm just loving um, having all of these people. Like, it's a show about perspective. So I think that, uh, 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 you know, the more perspective we have, uh, the funner it is. The, it's fantastic that I was able to join you this week. And I, I cannot be more elated to be on this uh, on this. Uh, final season and talking about it with you guys. So um, come around. Um, I'm working on my, I've, I've been lacking a little bit. So I'm working on my uh, episode four and five video right now, but I'm also going back and doing the other um, seasons of Atlanta on my Patreon. And I will be dropping a Atlanta season one, episode two video on my Patreon um, coming up uh, probably tonight or tomorrow and it's only one dollar so if you guys want to check me out there you can too watch this <laughs> uh and and the, the retro going back man I, i'm definitely uh because i saw the video you did on uh episode one season one and just you know you know it's a new perspective because especially when you're coming from knowing where the story goes and just getting a new uh light and appreciation of the show so it's definitely fire and for a dollar i mean come on guys that's a steal that is uh 
you can't beat that. You can't beat that, especially with going back to to stealing uh, Tyra. Her the price that she the, the effort the 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 edits the jokes the commentary. Oh. I mean, come on, man. These are these are deals. It's guys. been fantastic. It's been deals. fantastic. Yeah. This is uh yeah it's it's a fire content. So again and and again shout out to Brandon guys. His link will be in the description of this video as well to check him out. But nine Tyra, you guys are awesome. Hope you have a great Thank Sunday. Um, hopefully, like I said, we can do this again sooner rather than later to talk about the rest of the the craziness that this show has for us uh but for myself i, I thank you guys we had like said, over 100 and something people at one point i appreciate every single one of you all uh before you leave like share comment shout out to the replay gang uh again we'll see you tonight to talk about the dragons uh and you all uh, are awesome and like i said we'll see you guys on the next one jk